The future of Baldur's Gate hangs in the balance. Will you be the hero and save it from looming darkness? Or will the city crumble under your influence? Explore the vastness of the Forgotten Realms, overcoming its challenges however you choose. This journey is yours to make. Its path and your party shaped by each and every decision. You brought us this far. So how shall we proceed? Fight. Outthink. Aid. Manipulate. Steal. Bargain. The world and its denizens will react in kind. With 46 subclasses and over 600 spells at your disposal, experience true RPG freedom. As a solo adventurer or with a party of friends, become a force for good or sow chaos in your wake. In Baldur's Gate 3, you decide. Hello everybody and welcome to a very different High Rollers Dungeons and Dragons game because it is I, your usual Dungeon Master, Mark Sherlock Humes of the High Rollers channel, but I don't have my regular players and we're not in our regular world today because we have very kindly been uh, approached by Larian Studios and some rather fine guests to run a little D&D one-shot. And speaking of those guests, here they are. Let us start and have them introduce themselves and who they will be playing. Uh, starting with Mr. Theo, please take us away. Hello everybody, my name is Theo and I'll be playing Will Ravenguard, the Blade of Frontiers. <laughs> the Blade himself is here. Indeed. Uh, and then, yeah, moving on, please take us away. Hi, I'm Samantha Bell. I play Karlak. She is a tiefling barbarian, formerly of Baldur's Gate, recently of hell. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And I'm Jennifer, and I'm playing Shadowheart, God's favourite princess and the most interesting girl in the world. <laughs> Yes. Wait, is that a tag like God's favorite <laughs> T-shirt? Yeah. I know, I want the T-shirt. Someone make me a T-shirt. Uh, that will probably have already happened by the time this goes out there. Yeah, perfect. And then on our other side... It's Devra, aka Dev, playing Lazelle of Crash Kalea, the fiercest and best Gith Yankee in all the land. Oh, the voice. I love it, love it. <laughs> uh, and then moving on. Hello, I'm Neil Newborn, and I play... Possibly the greatest vampire in the world, Astarian. Hello, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Too natural now. Oh, I know. It's, it's a bit it's weird, isn't it? It's, isn't it? I know, it's very accessible, it's terrifying. I actually have his giggle now. Which is <laughs> I started, no, I started doing that like on a thing. <laughs> well, and then. Plenty to look forward to. Yes. Yeah. Well, last but certainly by no means least, please, Tim. Uh, well, I'm Tim, and I am Gale Decarius of Waterdeep, the greatest uh, wizard. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, none. Uh, and I'm, and I'm uh, totally of a mistress, so let's not yeah. talk about that yeah. anymore. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> totally <laughs> not, a deal. not a deal, not a thing anymore. <laughs> it's not making up for um, it by eating all the fine. magic items. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely not. not. Just, do you think, do, does Gale do the equivalent of like, high fantasy ice cream moments? Like, where he's just, like, oh, without a shadow of a doubt. Surrounded by Tressens. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh, this is going to be a very special one. Oh, yeah. Um, Definitely. Amazing. But yes, so thank you very much, Larian, for helping us put this together. Uh, and this is our, our Baldur's Gate cast D&D uh, &D one shot, which I've uh, given the title uh, The Echoes of Athcatla, which will all make yeah. sense uh, to come to be. Um, and yeah, thank you, Larian, for sponsoring this as well. Uh, just as a warning, there may be some mild spoilers if you've not finished Baldur's Gate 3, especially Act 1. There might be a couple of little tiny spoilers here and there um, but hopefully you've all got past that point and you've got out of character creation and actually played a bit of the game uh, so that won't matter too much um, now this is normally where I as the dungeon master would read you a little introductory thing to kind of set the scene to kind of set up where you're going to be oh yeah we have oh yeah <laughs> we, we got all the stops here oh. having a <laughs> <laughs> Does somebody smell toast? <laughs> oh, all of us are smelling the toast. <laughs> but, uh, 
But I'm not going to be giving you guys an introductory little readout today because I've got somebody who can do a far better job than me. Would you? Yeah. <laughs> Hello. 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 Oh, I've got text. He's, he's written <laughs> me some things. As well. Hi, I'm Amelia Tyler. I'm the narrator of Baldur's Gate 3, or your dungeon master. Um, I give you authority sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and right now, I'm going to be doing some sight reading for you. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. You got this. You got this. Okay. <clears throat> Somewhere in the wilds of the Sword Coast, you have made camp for the night. The stars overhead flicker and glimmer as you rest peacefully, recovering your strength from the arduous battles and adventures the last few days. You awaken just as the sun begins to crest over the horizon, spilling its pink and orange light over your bedrolls and tents. Birdsong fills the air in this idyllic scene as you don your armor and prepare for the day ahead. And then the peace of this moment is broken. Your companion, the hero who shares an elithid tadpole connection with you, is suddenly engulfed in a sickly green and yellow light. It pours over their body like liquid metal, silencing their screams as it pours into their mouth and over their face. With a violent jerk, their body is lifted up into the air and hovers in place. Yes! <laughs> as the internet breaks. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. So good. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm never going to be able to live that up. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Yes, you have all awoken this morning at your camp in the Wilds of the Sword Coast, and this moment of peace is shattered as Tav, the hero that has been accompanying you, uh, is lifted into the air, their body completely covered by this magical, flickering green and yellow light. It pours into their mouth, almost like liquid metal, kind of like filling their face. There you hear just the briefest scream before it's silenced, and then they're lifted into the air, hovering in place. Um, and all of you are present, you see this happen, and now I ask you the most important question, what would you like to do? Well, we all saw this coming, didn't we, darling? <laughs> Tab is currently floating up in the middle of the camp, uh, their body kind of almost like twisted and contorted, you can almost see pressure being exerted on them, um, and you will see this happen. Anybody like to do anything? Kill it. How it <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking I, should, I should probably do something like detect whatever magic is on you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 so there's okay. a couple of ways you can do that, uh, Gail okay. of Wardsy. Um, you could uh, use your detect magic spell if you have one, if you have the detect magic spell, you can cast that. Or you could just make an arcana check. Oh, okay. um, and you could just kind of maybe use your knowledge, your training as a wizard let's to try that. and figure out what might be going on. Let's do that. Let's, okay. lean, let's lean into that. <laughs> Great. Well, then this is we're going to make our first roll of the game. Um, oh. And it, Tim's first I roll was, ever. I was, oh. I was concerned that I would have to go first. And lo and behold, <laughs> and here, here we, we are. are going first. Shall uh, I cast guidance? Right. You well now. Oh, oh somebody's yes. been playing the game. I so, Jen, you absolutely can do that. Yes. So, so this and what we're going to do is we're going to kind of almost. I'd like to know what does this look like. So, Shadowheart, like you see Gail kind of approaching, maybe kind of. Pondering, thinking over what's happening. <laughs> what, how does Shadow Heart help? I'm how are you offering this guidance? You'll need help, help Gail. I'll, I'll deal with this. <laughs> no, but but I will help because I have guidance. Good, good point, well made. Uh, <laughs> we should we should probably do this yeah, as like work a together. team. Yes. yes that's how do you team. how do you imagine uh, Shadowheart's magic to look like as you kind of pull this energy from Shah, the goddess? Like yeah. you, you know, what does it look like? Do you have an idea of how like you might do it or like what the spell might look like? Yes, I should have should have looked this up. No, no, no. This I, is the, uh, you know this, this is, is pure is, imagination. Is, I'm imagining I'm imagining some like purple gorgeousness. Yes. Floating. <laughs> yeah. Floating. That's it. Are you and like surrounding Gale. 
you're playing D&D. Yes! <laughs> uh, did it! So you feel this kind of come over you. So what this means, Gail, uh, for the guidance cantrip, it allows you to add a D4, which is the tiny pyramid dice, to your arcana check. Right. So when we do I'd this... I'd like to also add moral support by a slow clap. Slow clap. <laughs> Very well done. Go, go um, Gail. Thank you. That's going to be most useful. <laughs> <laughs> you hear this as you're pretty sure you hear one of Tav's bones like... Like snap yeah. as the slow clap. But uh, moving on from that, um, you have uh, this is what we call an ability check in the game, a skill check, right? So this is Gale using his arcane knowledge to try and figure out what's going on. And there is a chance that Gale might not know what, what is happening. So we, we make a roll. <laughs> so you can take your big dice, the d20. Uh, you're going to add your guidance, which is the d4, which is the little pyramid. This one? Yep. yep. And then you're going to look for under your skills, your arcana skill. And you're going to uh, see that it has a bonus. Yep. Plus, what, plus five. Plus five. So you're going to roll those dice together and you're going to add plus five to the roll. Okay. And I have a number in my head that you're trying to beat, um, and I will tell you if you succeed or fail. Uh, So I've rolled a 17. Okay. So add it all up together. 22. And then how does this... You add that. So it was a four, so you add another four to it. Jeez. Yeah, three. Your number means nothing to Gale of what to do. 26. Indeed it doesn't. Gale, you are a master of the arcane arts. I told you. You are a wizard of great skill and knowledge. And you begin looking over uh, Tav, this champion that you've been traveling with. And there's a couple of things that immediately become apparent to you through your training and knowledge. And perhaps also Shadowheart's spell almost helping clear your your mind, allowing you to think clearly as you do. And um, And your clap is being really useful. Appreciated. Uh, so you know a couple of things. First of all, you know this spell is very, very powerful and very rare. This is not traditional magic in any sense. It has elements of uh, different schools of magic kind of merged together. But you also, with such a high roll, you know that this spell is somehow being channeled from a great distance. This is not being channeled from anyone nearby. This is miles and miles and miles away that this spell has somehow anchored itself to Tav and is affecting it. And you think what it's doing is it is taking over their body and their mind. It's almost trying to replace it with that of somebody else, right? Um, and that is kind of what you know. So whilst Gale is doing that, and Shadowheart, you're helping with the guidance spell, I'd like to kind of go around the table and find out what everybody is kind of doing. And you do see that as Gale's kind of pondering and thinking and maybe weaving arcane runes to try and figure this out, you begin to see like Tab's body almost shaking and sort of spasming and, you know, dead violently. Like you see like the bones almost threatening to kind of like snap and break. Um, so uh, let's go round unless anybody wants to volunteer themselves with an idea <laughs> okay Sorry, let's go with uh, Neil and Sarah please so um, can we all sense that the, even though well we can all make our knowledge checks here but yeah, do we, we, well obviously this is heavy magic Yes, uh, I think, and, and Gail's free. You can, you could have shared. You can say like, "Oh, I'm going to share that information." Us. Absolutely, it's big just... magic people. <laughs> <laughs> big magic. So we we yeah, both so agree. When I hear him say agree. it's big, big magic, magic. Big magic. Uh, I'm going to take a few steps back okay. towards like the camp area. But sure, sure, sure. Specifically, I'm also going to have a little look around and see if Tav's stuff is like. It. And you, oh well, do you know what I think? Because that... I feel that Tav hasn't been completely honest. With oh the group. well, I feel see, that like a last... detective. Well, I just feel that. that Maybe Tav was holding on to some items that really could be better served, well, shared. I think that there's a lot going on right now, so mm. why don't you make me a perception check, Asterian, okay. um, and to see if you do notice where Tav might have left their pack last night. Um, and you know, curious. you're very seasoned, so you know what this is. But this is the same thing. This is an ability check, so it's a d20 plus the roll, and then we compare it with the discovery. No, <laughs> okay, so this is, will this be stealth or sleight of uh, So well, this is perception because you need oh, to see sorry, if you perception. can find right, Tav's perception. pack somewhere. Uh, my perception is plus three and mm-hmm. um, this is a wisdom roll as well right uh, so it's just the answer the plus three because it's all pre-built into your skills right. down there so it's, it's all pre- pre-added all right so that's three that is five <laughs> <laughs> five total five total oh <laughs> so okay. you okay. so, yeah, yeah. So I, I have a thing for this yeah so, please yeah so <laughs> I start looking surreptitiously around and then I start I start looking as I'm doing this I notice around I notice Gail's boots I go because he's, he's doing all this stuff, yeah. so he's actually he's hoiked up his clothes a little bit, oh, and I realised they're really nice. They're very nice. Boots. I get a little transfixed with his boots, okay. yeah. to the point where I can't quite look away from them. Oh, 
the, the is stitching is exquisite. exquisite. You know, it's double, it's double exquisite. stitched. Mm. It cost a fortune. It cost a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I fortune. wonder how often he takes them off. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm a little fixated. So yeah, you're fixated yeah. on that. So Asterion kind of looking for Tav's gear to obviously check and make sure everything's all, <laughs> all in order. Um, you are distracted by by Kale's boots, unfortunately, yeah. and you do not seem to be able to find Tav's pack. Now maybe if, you know when you can spend some more time, you'll probably be able to search it and find it easily. But in this minute, like in a quick glance, you see no sign of it. Yep. Um, what about Lazel, Karlak, or the uh, sorry, or, or Will? Uh, getting my head character minds. Anything that you guys <laughs> think your characters might do in this scenario? I'm telling Gail to um. hurry the fuck up. <laughs> we really don't have time, and neither we do we have time for a Starion to be looking at people's boots. <laughs> this seems like quite an urgent, potentially life-threatening situation. It certainly does. And I don't know why you're taking so long. So while you're kind of like speaking <laughs> to these guys, <laughs> this is not easy. <laughs> <laughs> it should be for a wizard! <laughs> um, well, we, what you can do is there's a couple of options. If you want to, like, you can obviously just be yelling at Gale to hurry up and things like that. Um, but you could also, you know, you could try and uh, sort of, motivate you know, motivate him. Yeah, you, and there's a thing in the game called the help action, which oh, is, cool. uh, you know, it, like something I do. it doesn't sound like that's what you're going for, no. but it's a great chance tough to bring love. it up. Yeah, it's, it's tough, tough love. love. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and what that would do is if you do take the help action, not necessarily now, but in the future, you can give somebody advantage to a roll. Oh, what advantage cool. means is you roll twice and you take the highest. All right? So keep that in mind for the future, Lazelle. But for now, we're going to assume that Lazelle is just sort of next to Gail's shoulder, like, come on, hurry up, Come kind of yelling. <laughs> <laughs> like closing his You've got to go into your mind palace. You're like... <laughs> <laughs> all right, perfect. What about uh, Karlak and Will? Um, oh, I love it. Look, he's, he had, he's in. I love it. <laughs> After Gale's told us that yeah. somebody could be casting this spell on Tav, mm. I'm having a little look around the area. Oh, brilliant. If potentially that person casting that is close, so I'm a little bit on edge just okay. having sure. a look around. Yeah. Well, if you're having a look around, then there's the, the it's just like a staring, there's a skill called perception, and that is literally to like notice stuff going on around you. Sure. So I think we're going to make this a perception skill roll. Yes. Uh, so it's a d20, it's the big dice, mm -hmm. and then on your list of skills, you've got the big long list of the tables of skills. Uh, that's the right one there. And look for perception. Tiny font. I do apologize. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so what bonus do you have for that? Just plus zero. Plus zero. So this is just a straight d20 roll. Um, so you're going to roll that and then we'll see what we get. <laughs> I've got an eight. You got an eight. I'm going to say with an eight, there's, you don't notice the sign of like, you don't see any shrouded <laughs> figures. Yeah, you see a staring you kid. Said it, you said it was <laughs> really, really distracted by the boots as well. They're so nice. <laughs> you don't, Will, you don't see anybody like, you don't see any hooded figures or anything like that weaving spells, but I'm going to give you one thing for an A. You, because you are, you're a warlock, you forged this pact. You are probably a little bit sensitive to like magical energies and things like that because you've, you've, you, you hunt down fiends and devils and these kind of yeah. magical creatures. You do notice that there are these standing stones near the camp. And you can almost like, it's like a, there's like a fizzy taste in the air and a, and a smell of uh, uh, sort of raw power almost, like that kind of sizzling iron and sort of strange smell that you know companies magical energies gathering. And you can, you can tell that these standing stones kind of have that effect. You don't see anybody around you. Mm. All right. Um, and again, you guys can just, we can just say, Will would tell that to everybody, right? Will would tell. You don't have to specifically like say anything. You can just be like, yeah, I tell everybody what's going on or whatever. But yeah, you kind of sense that. And like, uh, they're kind of spread out to the edges of the camp, you know, near the trees and near the sort of like edges of it and things like that. You guys watch. And as you're doing this, uh, you you know, Tav is at this point like twisting and like shouting and is almost like twisting so violently there's a serious threat that they might like kind of like you know twist their neck or like their arm or something like that um it's clearly building whatever this spell is like the longer and longer it goes on like it seems to be like really causing some sort of effect um what about is there anything Karlak would like to do so? Karlak's gonna say oh fuck not again <laughs> and she's gonna take a step back seeing this lot concentrate maybe yeah. have a little look around ready herself with the okay. axe. Okay, alright, just get the axe out. Do you want to like make a perception check or is this you just like, if anything comes out you want to be ready to fight kind of thing? I want to see if someone's coming towards us, okay. maybe distracting us. Yeah, great, distracting. well then let's uh, let's May another... I have some guidance? Well, guidance has already been cast on Gale in this little moment, <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately it's not like the video stream? game, <laughs> just like, yeah, just every, time, every time, every <laughs> time. 
Yeah, no, uh, no, 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 no. But yeah, but I would say that like you've already like Will's done the same thing and picked up that there might be this strange energy. So I will give you advantage on the roll because I think like Will, might, you can see Will is like there's something that's I was bothering say, Will. Can I call on Karlak to come and investigate the? Uh, sure. Sounds perfect the to me. Yeah, that sounds perfect. You're a natural D and D yeah. player, man. This is it, baby. You get it. This, this, this is the guy who was just like, yeah. Like, I think I think I'll get it when we get in. <laughs> Dude, you're right. But, but, right. Right. In. Amazing. but yeah, so yeah, let's give a perception check with advantage, I think, on Karlak, and let's see what we get. So 16. 16, that's pretty good. And I've got a three. And three. So yeah, so so 19. 19 total. Well, with advantage, you get to roll twice and take the highest. So let's see if you could get high. You could get... No, I didn't. No, okay. <laughs> <That's a 10. laughs> uh, that, that's what um, so yeah, you begin looking around and you're like, oh, maybe this is a distraction or something like that. And Will kind of calls you over and mentions this like strange energy, and you're beginning. You see, Will didn't kind of pick up on this, but you see, maybe it's the years spent in Avernus, kind of always watching your back, and you're familiar with powerful creatures that can use magic and there's this like rippling just very faintly in the air as if something is about to arrive and that is the point when as Will and Karlak are looking at these stones and Gail is examining uh, uh, Tav and like beginning to see this kind of spell taking effect to stare in your admiring the boots, boots. Uh, Shadowheart <laughs> is providing Gail with this swirl of magic Lazel is just berating him uh, over his shoulder <laughs> uh, that is the point when the air seems to almost tear and rip in the air as around these sending stones the very fabric of the of the earth and the land begins to open and creatures begin to emerge Shit. Uh, no. <laughs> and this is where we're going to do that wonderful thing that we call in D&D and it's quite quick but we want to we want to introduce you to your first combat we're going to roll initiative and this is and uh, to explain this uh, this is going to basically be we're, we're going to determine the sort of order of combat basically um, <laughs> of how things go down um, so we're going to have uh, so everyone is going to take the d20 um, and you have a thing called initiative on your character sheet it's in the middle at the top next to your armor class and hit points so you're going to roll the d20 and then add that bonus and then uh, I'm going to <laughs> I got a <laughs> oh no <laughs> What'd you get? One. We both got one. We <laughs> <laughs> both rolled a one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. amazing. So you don't need no, me, do you? No, no, no matter your bonus. Oh, and we got a natural score. 20 over here with Dio as well. Oh, nice. That makes sense. Um, we, we both got one, which makes yours a two and mine a four. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a crit one, so it's it'll be a crit one. one. Yeah. Alrighty, uh, so uh, if I go around, you so find them. <laughs> <laughs> please, please, I'm in the middle of something. <laughs> uh, what do we get? There's a total for game. <clears throat> total seventeen. Seventeen. Alrighty, perfect. And then what, a staring. We have a natural one, but the, you do get a bonus. I go a four. A four. Well, that might help you go quicker than Lazel, who also got a four. <laughs> plus one, two. So two. <laughs> <laughs> And then what about Shadowheart? Uh, I've got six plus two, so eight. Eight, okie dokie. <laughs> and you're still berating like uh, <laughs> oh, that. Like, 14. 14. Right. Makes sense that Karlak and Will are probably a bit more ready for you. We both distracted by the beauty of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sometimes, the dice, the, sometimes the dice really line up really nicely with what's going on. <laughs> and then Will, we had a natural 20 for a total of? Nice. 22. 22. Because oh. oh. I might probably get the 20 on my, oh. my ones as well. Uh, All died. And they all die. <laughs> <laughs> TPK, first game of TPK ever. <laughs> so, let me describe a couple of things of what you guys see. But before I do that, we can't do a D&D combat without you guys having some miniatures. Yeah. Yes. So, um, <laughs> what I would like is for you to take your character um, and place them uh, roughly where you think they would be. I'm going to give you a representation of where <coughs> Tav would be. They could okay. be this little spooky yeah. ghost in the middle. Uh, so if you would mind taking them. Uh, oh. Oh. Look at that. That's amazing. <sighs> And could you... Hello, beautiful. <laughs> so cool. Is that your green no, base? Green base. There we go. Okay. Wonderful. <gasps> yours is amazing. Blade. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, you might need to. Oh, oh, I'll 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 
Now we've like made that. these ones, uh, these are going to be slightly bigger than the, the other enemies, just so you stand out a little bit more. Whoop. In case you wonder why you're giant compared to everybody else. Um, but yeah, if you guys would like to place yourselves no, where you think we... you would be on this wonderful map. These are, so these are the standing stones, right. and there's another set of them over okay, here as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm also going to point out now. that yeah. in your camp, uh, there is also uh, Scratch the dog is yep. here. Um, yeah. and that you also have uh, Volotham Gedard, uh, the sort oh, yeah. of traveling oh, yeah. uh, 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 blackguard who writes books and things oh, like right. that. He's been staying at your camp as well. Um, so we have Will and Kai over here by the tables, uh, near these kind of standing stones here. And probably Just like, oh, right. yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't quite reach. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I can move you guys. Do you want to be like more? Yeah. 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 At a distance, wizarding. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're wizarding. 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 You're admiring boots. I'm this way around, we're back to you, Tav. So. <laughs> okay, nice. Yeah. I'm. <laughs> On the, table. Yeah. on the table. On the table. <laughs> shout it, shout it, shout it, shout it, hurry up. If you don't you do this, I will end you. And then next to Gail. I'll have my sword. There's a lot of pressure on Gail. Yeah. Next to us, Darren. Okay. Um, I like the idea as well that uh, Volotham is like terrified of Lazel, so he's currently like crouched underneath the benches as you're stood over, uh, lingering. And then what you guys see is. Tactically brilliant positioning. Oh, perfect. Tactically brilliant. You've got this right. <laughs> <laughs> so, what you see emerging from this portal is five. I would call them spirits, but they almost look like uh, more magical energy than actual like ghosts. They're kind of uh, prismatic in color. They're constantly shifting in hue. Their bodies almost seem to like flicker and, and glitch almost, um, but they're definitely humanoid in shape. Some of them more than others, all different types of races, tieflings, elves, dwarves, um, men, women. Some look younger, some look older, but in the middle of them is a very bizarre creature. And, the miniature is not quite accurate, but what you see is almost like a statue of a glass warrior, like made purely from glass and crystal, with a glass sword and glass shield, stands in the middle of them, very impassive, just sort of scanning around, and it points with its swords towards Tav's body, and you watch as the spirits begin to and that is where our combat is going to begin. Um, so, uh, because we have uh, Mr. Will, Blade of Frontiers, going up first. Um, let's go over a couple of things about combat in D&D games, because this is you guys are learning for the first time. Probably we've got a few people at home learning for the first time as well. Uh, in combat in D&D, we take turns. Uh, so you're up first. On your turn, you can do a move, you can do an action, and you can do a bonus action. An action is things like attack with a weapon or cast a spell. Um, bonus actions are things that are specific on your character sheet. You normally have a spell or an ability that will say, as a bonus action, you can do this. And then moving is you can move your speed. Um, so for, I think for your speed for this example, it's normally at the top of your sheet, um, 30. Um, each square on our little battle map that we have here is five feet. So you can move six squares, yep. right? Well, You've put yourself very close <laughs> uh, as you were investigating this strange yeah. effect. Yeah. Um, Good luck. Yeah, basically. Thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and so, uh, so yeah, you can do that thing. There are different types of actions you can do beyond just attacking and casting a spell. There's things like dashing and disengage. But I think we're going to kind of try and keep things simple for now. You guys do have your little cheat sheets as well if you want to look those up. Um, but the main question is, well, what would you like to do? And they're advancing on us right now. Yeah, they seem. It you looks like the spirits almost. The creature didn't even seem to pay much attention to you. It pointed its sword towards Tav in this kind of like state of them being taken over by this spell, and the. Spirit Spirits look almost like they're gonna rush past you. Okay. Can I cast darkness? You absolutely yeah. can, absolutely. And then they wouldn't be able to. I'm gonna cast darkness. Okay. Yeah. 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 This is it, baby! <laughs> <laughs> so, in fact, I might even have a little thing for this. Uh... Jane, we're very proud. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can show you, I can use this to show you. So you, so first of all, let's get into the narrative area, right? What does it look like when Will casts a spell? Like, what do you imagine that looking like? Like, is this a gesture? Is this his eye, you know, goes black and inky like the night he's about to conjure? Is this like smoke t trailing out of his yeah. hands? His eyes go black, his other eye like rolls back into his head, Ooh. puts his hands like 
to the sky and he sort of like draws draws the magic down from yeah. the heavens. And you watch as the light in the area almost seems to dim, like it's turning night, but just in this small part, nature itself bending itself to Will's strength, and you hear that feminine devil voice whispering, nothing intelligible, but just you feel her presence, mm. your patron's presence in the back of your mind. And darkness would cover an area like this. Uh, on yeah. spirits. So where would you like to kind of like center this spell? Like you could have it right on the middle of them. You could have it so it more is affecting like you would like less you and Karlak. Like where roughly would you like it to be? Um, no, literally like right on top of us. Right on top of them. Just to like disorientate yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So you conjure this darkness. Now you have a special ability, Will, which allows you to see in magical darkness. Yes. Unfortunately, Karlak does not. So, but we have this darkness in place. So Karlak, you are suddenly <laughs> plunged into night um, as this shroud, this umbral shroud uh, encapsulates all around you. But Will, you see you see the spirits, like mm. these unstable spirits, do seem to be disorientated. Like, suddenly something has changed. You don't necessarily get the impression that they can see, but their magic is still obscuring their like vision or their, their sense of where they are. But that glass night looks directly at you as if as if it can see through the darkness and it just levels its blade almost like a challenge towards you so that was your action use my action you've used your action you cast okay. darkness and that's one of your spell slots as well so you've used one of your two spell slots mm -hmm. so that's gone just so uh, as a reminder gotcha but gotcha. you can still move and you still have a bonus action um, would you like to move at all yes. I don't think yeah I'm, okay I'm gonna move. I'm we're gonna, gonna move. We'll, we'll remove this temporarily so we can see where everyone is on the map yeah um, so <laughs> so just to, just to clarify, you're going to pull down this unlockable yeah. shroud, surround the area, yeah. like this, and then Will's like, see ya, Carlo! Yeah. Like, <laughs> Carlo, on the right! <laughs> And that's um, absolutely fine if you want to do that. Uh, <laughs> the blade of frightening, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, of course, of course. How, how far is uh is is this guy from me? This guy, <laughs> yeah, he is currently so five, ten feet from you. So you are about here. So each square, each square is Wait, five. Okay, feet. so I can't cast the spell on him right now, can I? Uh, you, you just cast darkness. So okay, so I just cast darkness. <laughs> yep. Um, and this good. This is like you know, it helps you you guys. This is your first D&D combat. Yeah, we're taking yeah, it yeah. slow. We're taking it slow. Eight. Tactical um, repositioning. Yeah, of course. It's all about yeah, tactics. Yeah, I'm not scared. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm going to back it up. Yeah, yeah so you see what you want, man. You have some. So you can move six squares. I'm, I'm going to move. <laughs> so you can go. So, so one, one, two, one, two, three, four. Oh, no. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. I'm just there. 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 All right. I, out of the darkness in it and like hopefully some others <laughs> catch my attention <laughs> and... amazing amazing <laughs> uh, well next up so uh, so that's your turn <laughs> if you had something you could do as a bonus action you could do done a bonus action as well I think for this time we'll just kind of keep yeah, things fairly yeah. simple um, we go to the next thing in the initiative order is Gale of Waterdeep uh, so you've seen all this happen this is all happening in about madness all around all madness all around you this is all happening in about six seconds so the turn takes like simultaneously like this all happens all at once uh -huh. but you've seen you've seen Will pull down this double shroud and then run back out of it um, and he turns around <laughs> like, 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 but he turns around and levels his blade uh, ready for it and you you saw briefly this conjured spirit host and this glass knight on the inside of that darkness yeah seeing as this knight is made of glass yes I'm thinking I shoot a ray of frost and freeze it that sounds oh, really good. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. why you pay him that's the big bucks. Yeah. That's why. That's it, that's why you got this. That's where you got to go. Now, <laughs> this is an excellent plan. There is a slight complication. There always is. There always is because <laughs> the darkness is over it. You can't see into the darkness. Imagine like a big orb of black, big oh orb of night. Oh, okay. You can still try it because you knew where the night was. Yeah. But it affects your accuracy, and you roll with disadvantage on the attack because okay. you are effectively blind. Cool. So you can okay. still try it. You like. Well, I think he was twenty degrees this way and then but yeah. you've got to hope that he hasn't like or this creature hasn't I'm, moved I'm going to hit something you can, can, I, hit something. can I do guidance because I'm right next to him unfortunately so because we're now in a turn based thing you <sighs> can't until your turn also guidance doesn't affect attack rolls but you do have a spell that does affect attack rolls what's my spell bless then? that's the one we took so guidance yeah, is for like skills and role play yeah, yeah. 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 you have the greatest okay. spell of all Azel. <laughs> so 
swords. <laughs> uh, no, you. But we'll get into your turn. You have something called battle mask maneuvers. You can do some very cool tricks and stuff. I'm no, not you're, you're I need that. But yeah, let's do. Uh, so, let's do. Get so can I hold back until the bless? You could do if that's if you think that, that that's what that that yeah, might absolutely. It, yeah, but I was. I, I, was, I would like, like to assume. Yeah, but, <laughs> but I can only one do. Would not like to assume. I can only that, do one spell, right? You can, you have your action and casting a spell as your action. It's yes. tricky, isn't it? Because shield of faith is very good as well. It's really well, good, exactly. and I was like, I was going to shield. I was going to shield. Uh, tap mm. because I can see through the dark that this is magical darkness. So only the only one who can see through this darkness is Will, oh. and he's running oh. away. He's running away. <laughs> Listen, I don't. I'm not going to labour the point. No. I feel like Will has, has done his thing. Let's leave it. Let's leave it well alone. I've lost a lot of respect for Will. <laughs> yeah. You're warning him. You're running out I've made some darkness. <laughs> just <FYI. laughs> okay, everyone. There's a lot of darkness. Deal with <laughs> so it's Gail's turn. So there's, you can have a little bit of tactical <laughs> chat of like, oh, can you do this? Can you do that? I'll give you, I'll give you bless. All right, yeah, yeah. let's do let's that. Hold right. Let's hold back. So hold back one. and let's do that. Bless. bless. Hashtag bless. bless. Look, you've got it. Bless. 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 So Gail, Chris, your okay. action. Yep. You're going to hold your action yep. until you get the bless from Shadowheart, and then you're going to try and ray of frost the glass knight. Right. All right. Would you like to move? You can still move on your turn. That doesn't affect it. Uh, as in physically move. Physically move your character like around. So I every think. square is, uh, uh, you have a speed of 30 feet, so you can yep. move six squares. And I'm still trying to work out with the magic on. You, you feel like you've worked out as I've much as you out, can. Now. Like this is okay. a very ancient spell. Like you kind of figured out that, yeah, it's been cast from very, very far away. Um, it's slowly taking over their body and their right. mind. It's extremely powerful. It tastes like purple. Yeah. Right now, <laughs> right like now it looks like, the other thing I would say, cause you did roll like a 26. Um, you have a feeling that seeing those spirits appear you have a feeling that if they were to like harm Tav, it will speed up the process. If they were able to like reach and, and physically harm Tav, uh -huh. it will speed up whatever process this spell is trying to do. Okay. I'll tell you that for Are a you free telling week. us that? Right. Mm. I'm telling uh, yeah, is he telling us that? that that's up to Tim. Uh, I've Does told he have time this. to? <laughs> so so what's got... the plan? Well, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all understand that, yeah? yeah. <laughs> Tadpole chap, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. Chap. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Chap. Course, yeah. So that's what's happened there. So do I move? Do I move? Uh, do you know what? I'm not going to move okay. because if because I've got the angle, and if I move, it might throw the angle it off. Might throw the angle off. And if, all, if this all happens very quickly, <laughs> it does happen I don't want to kind of throw it off. So I'm going okay. to stay where I am. So Hold off. So all right. Clever. In that case, that is the Gale. Gale's go. Uh, we go to uh, Karlak. You know, I, I rolled very badly for the monsters, by the way. Um, <laughs> so we go to Karlak, who is currently in darkness. Yeah. Um, uh, so there's two things I'd like to do. Yes. Does order matter? You tell me and we'll figure it out. I'd like to rage against the dying of the light. <laughs> but I would also like to move out of it so I can... Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Basically put myself between... Absolutely. Uh, Tav. And these and, creatures. And the, just the darkness. Yeah, so uh, if you would like to rage, I believe it says, if you want to read it out on your little uh, ability there, mm. I think it says if it's a bonus action action. Extension. It's a bonus action. There you go. Uh, so yeah, it's a bonus action. You can do these in any order. You can yeah. move, attack, bonus action, any order you like. So you rage as a bonus action. Uh, uh, do we kind of it, we imagine like the flames kind of coming out of the engine, venting heat off your body, maybe seeing some of the steam of the morning sun kind of thing? I mean, that would be pretty much in character, wouldn't it? It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. pretty good. We'll stay with uh, fire, shall yeah. we? And then, so you kind of, you know, begin to rage, you gain the benefits of that, um, which we'll go into if that comes into effect, and then you would like to move, so please uh, feel free to move yourself around. You, you have enough spatial awareness that you're like, I remember where behind me was. Um, yes. Three. <laughs> Four there. All righty. Am I out of the dust? Just, just about. I'm going to say that you're going to be yeah. just out. Basically, uh, if it hit me, I'll take half as much damage. Yeah. That's the deal. And also, like, if these things rush tank. forward, they might rush past you, yeah. and that's what we call an opportunity attack. If a yep. creature moves past you, you get to kind of make a free mm -hmm. swipe against it. So the tactical retreat is exactly, very, very wise. Long term. Long. Oh <laughs> it's anything. It's that's it. That's that's a move, a bonus. <laughs> that was a move, a bonus action. Anything you'd like to do on an action? Like, I'm just uh, going to yell, fuck off! Okay. At, yeah. at the darkness. All right. Okay. As I do nice. every night. Um, yeah. Roll, 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 roll. <laughs> Intimidate check for me. Yes. As an action. Like, let's have you, because you're like, you know, you're scary. Uh, D20. Yeah. yeah. So D20 plus your intimidation. <laughs> So that was 11 plus 3. Plus 3. Okay. Um, yeah. I might be a bit upset. Might be a bit upset. Let's, let's, find, let's, let's find out. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll to see how scared <laughs> these spirits might be. Ooh, 
it's pretty good. Unfortunately, you kind of don't see anything, but you don't hear any sounds that they've been affected by, like, like kind of shouting it's at worked. them. Nothing, nothing seems to <laughs> it's work. It's worked. It's definitely, it's going definitely going. worked. <laughs> um, what does happen next is exactly what Kai and some of you believe might have happened. As the spirits rush out of the darkness, uh, kind of panicked by it, uh, as they, but they do so blindly. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have those. So they can do. They look like you need some help, Carla. Yeah, they're going to move once, and then I'm going to do something. I'm going to have them use their action to do something called dash, which lets them move again. So instead of attacking or casting a spell, they can move again. Uh, And indeed. Oh, Oh, fuck. Mm hmm. So Karlak and Will, you guys, as two of them actually kind of rush past you and out of what we call your threatened area, which is basically five feet around you. Two of them have moved beyond that. So Karlak and Will, you both get to make free attacks against these creatures. Uh, This is a weapon attack, so it has to be with one of your weapons. So um, your great axe, I believe, Karlak, and your rapier, Will. And this is to see if I actually hit. This is to see if you hit, yes, yes, exactly. (laughs) <laughs> so what do we add to it? Uh, the attack bonus. So on the middle column, you should have Great Axe. No, that's all right. We're learning. So it should have the name of the weapon, Great Axe, and then the next column is the oh, hit bonus. And then you have the damage. All right? Uh, so what do we get for Will? 12 plus 5, 17. 17 is a hit against these creatures. I'll come to the damage in a minute. We'll see if Karlak hits. Yeah, 15 plus 4, Fif- 19. 19. You both hit. So the rapier kind of strikes in. <laughs> piercing through this and you see it almost like glitch like <laughs> become distorted oh. the great axe swings through similar kind of thing um this time now you're going to roll damage so uh, the damage is the next column along each weapon has a different amount of damage it can do so we can uh, actually hurt these things it does appear to be so they, it's weird they have the appearance of ghosts but they almost look like they're made of magic and they they seem to be affected by weapons okay. and, and everything else is normal um yeah so that one's that um, and then you what's the bonus you add to it so it says uh, the damage bonus um, uh, 1d8 plus 3. Plus 3. One so you're going to roll that, add 3 to it, and that's how much damage you do. Ah, oh, 2. 2. So plus 3 is 5. Yeah. So you strike this thing and you watch it kind of dissipate a little bit. But it's almost like parts of it are left. Like like it's been fragmented, but mm. the whole thing hasn't quite dissipated entirely. Um, but it does look very badly damaged. Very, very badly damaged. And then what do we get for car axe damage? <laughs> Plus two. Plus three. So five. So same five. thing. You kind of swing the axe down. Woof. Same thing happens. Oh, but you are raging. Oh, yeah. And you do Double. get a damage bonus to rage. Uh, so what it says on your rage, it says that you get a bonus to your damage rolls. In a rage, you deal plus two damage with your attacks, take half damage from everything except psychic damage, and have advantage on strength checks. So so it was five plus another two for your rage, so it's actually seven points of damage. Because right. you add two to every attack you make, and that is enough. Yay. You watch, uh, Karlag, as this thing runs past you, you kind of woof, swing the axe down, and it just like a gust of wind, it kind of just disperses this creature um, entirely. (laughs) (laughs) There's a however. When this type of creature, when this creature in particular is destroyed, it erupts in magical force. And I need uh, you, uh, uh, you and Will, I need you both to make dexterity saving throw. So this is a type of roll we do to see like, I've got to dodge out of the way, you're like John Woo leaping out of the way or like deflecting something away from you. You're using your agility and your reflexes to kind of prevent yourself from being harmed. And you have a little column up the top above your skills of saving throws. So it's a d20 plus your dexterity bonus. Seven. Plus your dexterity bonus. Plus one. Plus one. Eight is not enough, I'm afraid that's going to be a failure. Fifteen plus two. <laughs> Fifteen plus two. So, Karlik, you managed to kind of like throw your body to the side um, and you don't take any damage from this thing. As it blows up, you kind of, kind of like, as you disperse it, that radiant energy that was left kind of crackles in the air and then ignites and you feel this kind of concussive force. Will, unfortunately, you kind of like are surprised by this. It kind of catches you in the blind side and you are going to take... 
I get to roll some dice. Okay. You're only going to take three points of force damage. It kind of like, kind of, you know, concusses you ever so slightly. Okay. But yeah, so with that, you mentioned the thing. They use their action to dash. They can't do anything else this turn. You did that on their turn. Those spirits, they're done. Turns over. So we go to Shadowheart next. Hi. Hello. <laughs> we are working together, aren't we, darling? We are. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna bless you. Uh, <laughs> well, go on. Bless. <laughs> uh, so if you want to just read out the spell bless, because it's good for like people at home oh, and yes. everything else. If you read it out to everyone. Me. Yeah. Uh, material: a sprinkling of holy water. So I'm cleric. <laughs> you bless up to three creatures. So you get Gale, but you can pick two more as well. Uh, right, okay, so we've got... Neil's uh, making it, he's like, pick me! <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, what about Tav though? Because I'm concerned about Tav. You could absolutely, but yeah, you can still target Tav as well. Because they are heading for Tav. Yeah, and, and this will give them a bonus to their saving throws and things like that as well. Yeah, so I think Gale... Tav, and then who else is near me in the fight? <coughs> well, yeah, you've got a staring, you've got Lazel. This this spell has like a range as well, so you can hit any of your eyes. You can also include yourself. Oh! Yeah, I think me. Okay, great. Yeah. All right. Um, so, you. and then if you want to read out just what the effect of this oh, yeah. is as well. The effect. You bless up to three creatures of your choice within range. Yeah, that's good because yeah. also I'm in range of me. Whenever a target makes an attack roll or a saving uh. throw before the spell ends. The target, oh, it's carrying on. The target can roll a d4 and add the number rolled to the attack roll or saving throw. Yeah. So it's like a super guidance. You actually get to add it to attacks and saving throws, but it affects multiple people as well. Great. So any attacks you make or any saving throws you make, you get that extra d4. But the important thing to know with this spell is it's called a concentration spell. If you take damage, there's a chance that you might lose your focus and that spell will go. So something important to remember. Likewise, if you cast another concentration spell, it overwrites it. All right? Keep that in mind. And do I do I do guidance on this one as well? Uh, so guidance is a concentration spell. If you were to cast guidance, you would get rid of the bless. It would overlap oh, okay. the bless. Oh, we don't want that. You don't want that. Okay. Exactly. That's so, that all right. You have guidance so, though, don't you? Yeah. You love guidance. I love guidance. <laughs> we all you just want to use guidance, guidance all the time. Yeah. Yes. Baldur's Gate 3 has me. taught people that guidance is one of the greatest things in, in the universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Alright, so uh, so that is your action to cast Bless. Also, what does this look like? So we've seen you kind of pull the shadowy magic. Is there a different look to this? Is it the same sort of thing? So, I think for Bless, so I'm throwing holy water, right? So I feel like it's a more like outward spell yeah. than a... Little super soakers. <laughs> <laughs> holy super soakers. Holy super soakers, <laughs> That would be very bad for you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no reason. No reason. No. Yeah. I feel like holy water in this story and it's a bad problem. Well, I don't well, want you to not so much. evaporate. <laughs> right. um, yeah. So that's your action to cast Bless. We see you kind of spread this out. Um, you still have a move action if you would like as well, if you would like to move anywhere. Uh, I'm quite happy with where I am because okay. I know my strength isn't great. Okay. So I don't feel like putting myself between gotcha, uh, gotcha. Gale and the monsters is a good idea. So I'm going to stick where I am for now. Yeah. Alrighty. And then do I have any uh, more things that I can So do? you could do a bonus action as well. So sometimes you have a spell that's a bonus action, like Shield of Faith, but it's a concentration spell. But also, like, you don't have to use a bonus action this time. You can just sort of, like, you've, you've done a cool thing, you can move on. But I want to milk it. <laughs> I want to do all the things. Why won't the game let me do all the things? <laughs> what about invoking duplicity? Would that help? You, with you, I mean, if you would like to do that, you can totally do that if it's a bonus action. But, like, I could just confuse, I feel like the these guys are easily, easily confused. Mm. So, like, by adding another like person in the mix for them to like concentrate on, then they can like they they then they can leave Will and Carl up alone that, a bit. That sounds very so cool. So I'm like, I love it. Yeah, so I'm doing that. Please, okay, all right. So you would like to invoke duplicity? Yes. Uh, we're going to use another one of these little spectral, little spectral You've figures. Done your research. Um, I so <laughs> where would you like soul instinct? It's a soul instinct. Time. Jim, where would you like the the, the duplicate to appear? Uh, like between, uh, tab, like in front of Tav, uh, so between. Like, but no, no, no. 
Yeah. I, my arms are too short. They're too right. short. So in between Tav and the blue ones. This one? Yeah. Uh, so is that a duplicate of Shadow? It is, it is. I, I'll remember oh, it, but yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah, no, this is a duplicate of Shadow. Oh, Shadow. So it, almost, you guys all see this almost near perfect replica of Shadow Heart just sort of spring into existence. Oh, this illusory oh. version of Shadow Heart, kind of with mace and shield, like threatening them and stuff like that. Um, and you can control, you can move it around later on on other turns. But right, so you summon this, you call upon Shar, and you feel the shadow almost, uh, like the shadow itself forms into Shadow Heart, right? Great. Wow. Very cool. This very, very cool. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, so we're going to jump back in. And actually, we forgot, Gail, you had held a readied action for when you got blessed. Um, so let's do that before anything else, because Shadow Heart just blessed you. Um, so you wanted to cast Ray of Frost yes, I do. on the Glass Knight. Yep. Um, and you now have Bless, so you get to add a d4 to the attack roll. Um, right. So you're going to use one of your cantrips. This is the first time we're going to be seeing uh, an attack cantrip. So cantrips are like spells that you can cast as many times as you want. They don't cast spell slots. Um, and your Ray of Frost one has information on your attack column in the middle of your sheet. You should have oh, Ray, yes, of Ray of Frost. Yep. So what's the bonus that you normally plus get? Plus five. So you're going to roll a d20 plus five and another d4 because of the Bless as well. So that's 15, mm. 20. 20, and then add the d4. Let's get into good habits of adding out adding out blessings. Yep, let's run a little pyramid. What's that? 2. 22. 22. Uh, now, remember, this is at disadvantage. So if you're going to roll that d20 again to see if you get a lower result than a 15. So you're at disadvantage. Right. So you roll twice and you take the lowest because you're currently unable to see the, the glass knight in right. the darkness. Okay. But that, that bless is still going to add 2. Okay. 8. 8. So it would be 8. Plus two from the bless, Ten. plus five because your attack bonus. Fifteen. 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 Not bad, not bad. Yeah. Might yeah. still burn, just be enough. It is. Yes. Thank you. So you cast uh, and then you. flip it off immediately. Yeah. 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 Almost imagine this, like into this like sphere of darkness. Imagine just a completely opaque Vanta black kind of globe in the middle of this field. <coughs> and you watch Gail, you're kind of like angling it and just see the trigonometry in your mind and then. <laughs> Um, yeah, was it, do you have like an idea of how Gale might channel a, a, a ray of frost? You know, ray of frost. I think he would bring it up from the depths, and then just whoosh. yeah, nice. So we kind of get this like freezing beam of, of uh, cold. So how much damage does ray of frost do? Uh, right, one d eight. Yep. So that is the little uh, trapezoid kind of this guy, this little yeah. diamond thing. Yeah, the little yep. diamond guy. Um, I'm going to tell you a little thing because you were quite right. Ice, glass. This creature has got a trait called is vulnerable to cold damage and maybe other types of damage as well, which means it takes double damage. Oh, yeah. 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 So you're gonna roll this and whatever you get, we're gonna double it. You're gonna need a bigger boss. No. Oh, yeah. One. <laughs> That's a two! <laughs> two damage. It's going so well. Oh. Well, I feel it's in keeping with our party's vibe. Do we? Yeah. <laughs> Doing really well. Oh. So we watch <laughs> as this, this like, you know, almost impossible <laughs> angle, like tracing it without even being able to see it. And we just get this, you know, maybe the ray kind of diminishes as it gets to the end and it freezes like yeah. a piece of the pauldron, kind of frosts up a little bit like a nice Christmas ornament, but sadly doesn't seem to have a huge. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. It does strike. It does like. <laughs> but uh, not too much damage, I'm afraid. Um, and that was so that was on Shadowheart's go because you had held your action. Um, after Shadowheart's go, it is actually the Glass Knight itself is going to go, um, and it is going to make its way. It moves Good up luck, Will. towards Will, and it is uh, <laughs> going to try and attack you. Pissed it off. That's what happens. Uh, yes, <laughs> it is going to make an attack roll against Will. So kind of like you guys when you attack the monsters do the same. Thing. Thing. Mm -hmm. um, and Bring I am trying to beat your on. AC. So what's Will's AC? It's at the top, uh, above your hit point. 13. 13. So that represents like your armor and your agility and how hard you are to hit, right? So I need to roll a d20 and I need to be a 13. Um, and the, the first attack I make is indeed a 13. And because I meet it, I beat it, is the way to remember it. Okay. So I am going to do some damage to you, but this thing gets to make two attacks. So I'm going to see if it hits you on its backswing. Uh, and that is also going to hit, unfortunately, with a 17 to hit. So it strikes you once, and on the backhand, it kind of brings its blade against you again. So that is going to be uh, five points of damage, and then another three points of damage. So eight points of damage total. Wham! Wham! As this glass sword kind of <coughs> slices into you, Will. Um, but that's it. It just moves up. It makes those two attacks. Uh, you can see its movements are very sort of 
rigid and robotic. Like, you know, it is. it doesn't have the flow and the fluidity of an organic creature. It's very sort of rigid in its mindset. Um, then, <laughs> Let's kill this guy. we finally reach Lazel and Sarian. So Lazel, you were up first, and then uh, Sarian, you were going to be last in our order. So Lazel. Uh, no, sorry. Other way around. <laughs> Asterian <dare> first. <laughs> Asterian <laughs> first, then Lazel. Thank my you. apologies. My apologies. <laughs> uh, dyslexia. It's a hell of a thing when you're reading lots of numbers and names. Um, right, so yeah. Uh, Asterian, you are up. Uh, yep. What would you like to do? Um, <laughs> I'm just going to look at Gale, look at Will, just go... <sighs> and then um, I'm, I'm going I'm to I'm do something which is probably going to not work, but I'm going to okay. try anyway. So what I want to do is yes. I have cunning action. Yes. Which can So certain actions that would normally take up my action, I can actually use it as a bonus action. Can indeed. Including dash. Yes. Question for the DM. Yes. I would like to... As I see all this going on, and that I realize how vulnerable these things are, mm. and that Karlak is a heavy hitter, but that Will potentially may have bitten off more than mm. he can chew. Again. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'd like to... <laughs> the shade. The shade. The Just the tea, darling. Just the tea. Just the tea, darling. Tell me I'm wrong. Uh, no, no, so I'm joking. Um, I'd like to actually, because Gail's like sort of in front of me doing this mm -hmm. thing, and that ray of frost is coming out. Yep. So I don't want to go in front of him. So what I'd like to do is sort of like do a hop, jump, and a skip, and then leap off here. Oh yeah. With my, pull my shot. Uh, my short bow out and do a John Woo dive to the side and try and hit past Will mm. to hit the glass. Um, do oh, you, yeah, I love it. Cool. I love but it very can much. Can I use my dash, therefore, to do that action yeah. with a little acrobatic Ooh, and, absolutely. Then, and then use my action dash? I'll shit. tell you what, I'll, do, I'll do you even one better. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, <laughs> so you can move through allies, you can move through buddies, by the way. So, like, if they're blocking a path, you move through them. It costs you a little bit of extra movement, it costs double movement. Yeah. But you're dashing. dashing, you've got plenty of movement to get up here past Lazelle and then dive over Volo yeah. who is cowering on the floor and I'm going to use with. Volo to launch myself even sure. further you know what <laughs> um, as a step yeah. this is all going to happen 100% you're going to do this yeah. but to see if I can, you can get maybe that jump that extra height will give you maybe a bonus on the attack make an acrobatics check for me. sure thing well my acrobatics is very good it's plus 5 plus 5 so alright so uh, d20 plus d20 5 d20 plus 5 that is a 19 that's 24 oh. Can I, can I also Damn. give, uh, as I do that, can I just give Gale a wink? <laughs> uh, you see him as he leaps over you, Gale. Are you thinking about the boots again? I was going to say, I think he's changed his relationship to you. The white Not that kind of wink, more well, like a watch this kind of wink. Uh, You're pretty sure that at some point, maybe just in the trees, a couple of doves just happen to fly, fly past. past. Like, <laughs> in fact, well, I see them flying past and I time my jump as the doves just go... As I go through. So you fly and soar through the air, uh, launch yourself over. Because of that great acrobatics roll, I'm going to give you advantage on the attack roll, Because awesome. So as you fly through, you've kind of got like a height advantage. Cool. Like you're shooting down onto this thing. It is next to Will as well. Okay. Um, so advantage, you roll twice, you take the highest. Cool. What's your bonus on your short bow? Uh, plus five. Plus five. So D20 plus five, try and beat its AC. Yeah, and then I get to roll twice because of advantage. You do, yeah. You take the highest. So first roll is really shit. First roll is five plus five, it's ten. Uh, second roll, thank God, is 13 plus five, that's 18. 18 is a hit. Uh, so you watch as the arrow flies out of this thing. I'm not even looking. I'm like, oh. I'm like winking at him. Actually, that's it. I don't even look. I see where he is. And as I go past, I look at Gale, wink, and then release, not even looking where the arrow is. I love it. Uh, this, the arrow flies true. It strikes in the creature. Now, there's a couple of things here. As it flies through, a couple of things, because it, you have advantage on the attack, yeah. but it's also next to an ally, and you're a rogue, Asterian. Yes, so it means you get sneak attack, which yes, is your kind of special class thing, which is extra damage. Yeah. So what's your normal damage on the short bow? Uh, normal damage is 1d6 plus 3. And then how much is your sneak attack? Sneak attack is two, plus 2d6 two wow. damage. Right. You can ask some so of get... your friends to lend you some extra d6. You can roll it all together. Yeah. I'm just going to take yours and I'm going to take yours. He's stealing your dice. Great. I'm taking your dice. Do it. <laughs> no, not even asking. Not even asking. But yeah. And then, uh, so 3d6. And then plus the 3, right? Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, that is, wow, that is three fours, that's 12 plus three, it's um, 15. 15 yep. points of damage. Hot dice, hot dice. Uh, yeah. Nice. So, yes. Thank you, folks. You watch as this arrow thuds into the glass kind of like chest plate of this knight, and you watch as it cracks. Uh, maybe the little bit that Gale had frosted yeah, over just gave enough. Just saying. That's why I win. <laughs> that's, that's the place to hit it. <laughs> Alright, Asterian, would you like to do any more movement? You probably have about 10, 15, 20, 
the, 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 you've probably got another the, 30 feet of movement. You've got another yeah, six squares well, you can move. What I'd like dashed. to do is because he's focused, even though I've hit him, mm. he's focused on where they're in combat. Yep. So I want to flank him from maybe like but from behind. Like, do you uh, want to move in for melee or would you like to stay at range? I think range right? because I'm probably sure. going to be at the moment a little bit better. Would uh, you like to like duck behind here for some cover potentially? Yeah, yeah, you know, actually, yeah. If, so the jump happens. I'm still doing this. Cool. I look up, Gale, wink, fire. Mm. I land in a rock tuck roll and then just like just vault <laughs> over. <laughs> yeah, just vault over. I am living out so many fantasies right now. Amazing. Uh, I just vault over that thing. Just yeah, little, great. Duck behind it. It's a great. Also, it's a great chance. So for you guys, like if you're behind something like a stone wall, <laughs> you can gain a bonus to your defenses called cover, and you can kind of you know if somebody's shooting arrows, that you can duck behind it. So if these guys were to start like maybe throwing magic or something against him, yep. he might get a slightly higher defense bonus, right? Uh, because of it. Great. Perfect stuff. Then we come to last, but by no means least, lace out. Waiting for this. One. I know, lays <laughs> out. Finger, let, let us pray that the dice uh, reward you for uh, waiting so long. Well, now I was relying on Gail to do a little bit more frosting, <laughs> so then I could go in and smash mm -hmm. those guys to pieces. Um, however, he did not deliver. Unbelievable. It's pretty standard, I would say. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, you could. Chat and no action. You've got these guys. <laughs> so, uh, 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 these guys here. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So, and now I seem to have a lot of things that I can do. Yes. I'll give you the short of it. Yeah. I'd like to sort of charge in right in the middle there. <laughs> so, we're talking How like against all of these guys here yeah. or against this knight? Well, oh, um, probably against those guys there. Yeah. Because they so, you're charging into the, so, the spirits, these unstable yeah. spirits that are attacking, that yeah. going for Tav, basically. So, we watch as Laser leaps off of the table, nice. great sword pulled out. Uh, you land in the middle, you've got two of them within reach. Right. What would you like to do? Is this... Smash them. Great. You've got a couple of choices. Because you're a fighter, you can just make a normal attack and just attack with your greatsword. But you can also do these things called battle maneuvers, which are like, you can like knock enemies, uh, you can disarm them and oh. things like that. They're all in your oh, little middle I column. Um, in your middle column, they should be written down. I'd um, love to use a menacing attack. Yes. That yes. sounds menacing. Thing. Very good. So you, these you can trigger like when you make an attack, when you hit, you can choose to then you can basically say, oh, I'm going to spend ah, a point to do it basically. Okay. And it means that you get to add extra damage, but also menacing attack, you might make an enemy frightened of you. Like they make a saving throw. But first, <laughs> we have to see if you hit. Oh. Um, <laughs> I, I, I am confident. Nice. Uh, <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. So this is a d20. So yeah. this is the big dice. And then you're going to add, what's your bonus for your great sword? Middle column. Oh, it's a plus five there. Plus five. Not okay. a bad one. Love to see it. Okay. So we're going to roll this plus five. It's a. What is that? It's oh, four. it's a four. <laughs> Sorry, it was upside down. I was like, what is that strange symbol? Uh, that's a nine then. A nine. So it's the leap <laughs> off the table. You're a skilled warrior, you know what you're doing, but that leap just gives you that slight momentum where this spirit almost glitches to the side and the great sword <laughs> thuds into the grass, missing, unfortunately. You look awesome. Well, right? well, well. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some good news for you, though. Oh, go on. You have an ability, because you're a fighter, called action. Surge. Oh yeah. An action surge lets you take another An action. action. I so see you can right make here. another attack Refresh. if you want to. After a short rest? After a short rest, yeah, you get it back after a I short see. rest. Okay, short rest to tell Gail to fuck off. <laughs> and um, here we are, we're back. So you I don't know what I hate for you today. It's usually direction. I know, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's that first roll, like, you know, just, <laughs> just nailed it. So yeah, so you'd like to use your action surge and try again. I would love to. Let's do it. So make another Another attack. It's another four! <laughs> oh! Well... Dev, uh, <laughs> welcome to DD. Welcome to surely, surely he now has advantage on everything. <laughs> I don't like this game! <laughs> Do I still have my greatsword bonus? Uh, oh, no, wait, this is a different thing. Yeah, no, so you didn't spend those points because you didn't actually hit, so you right. don't need to worry about your, your menacing attack. You've, you've missed, unfortunately. You still add the five, but it's only going to be a nine, nothing. and that still misses, unfortunately. Right, yeah. so yeah. I have nothing. You basically are telling me I have nothing. I've done nothing. You've swung. After all that, swung, yes. very yeah. heroic. It's I've a done swing nothing. and a miss, but you looked really badass. 100%. Sounds right. Glad I waited so long for that. Yeah. Uh, we are going slow. We're kind of teaching everybody. We're going to get through it a little bit quicker. It's cool. At oh, the wait, very at the very end of the round, 
Volo is going to run behind here next to Asterion. <laughs> oh, good master Asterion, I'm so sorry. Uh, I see that you've uh, had the tactical decision to retreat to the, the end of the field as well. <laughs> and he kind of like ducks down and takes his hat off and crouches. Like, without you doing any damage, after he said that, I'm just going to stare at him and just slap him. <laughs> <laughs> and then just sort of turn back to the fight. Oh yes, yeah. I suppose I, I could lend a hand. <laughs> <laughs> he's sort of like whimpering as he does. All right. um, and then Scratch oh. is going to oh. 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 Uh, and Scratch is going to make an attack. Oh, yes. um, as, uh, you know, Tav. Best boy. Best boy. Best boy. Best boy. And uh, would, would one of you like to roll for Scratch, in fact, actually, rather than me? I can. I can oh, like so then in general, uh, they there. have a plus three to hit. So if you just roll the d20, uh, and then you're going to add three to it for me. Eight. Eight plus Gosh. three Lovely. is an eleven, which is enough to hit these unstable spirits. Yes. You were really close, like they were so close. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, Scratch kind of leaps up, and yeah, these things, he seems to bite into it like it's physically there. Um, and if you can roll the d6, which is the normal dice, uh, the one that everyone knows and loves, uh, and this is plus one damage. It's, it's, it's on my hand. <laughs> it was three, it was three. Three, so four points of damage. Uh, so you watch as Scratch kind of bite, like, bites into one, bears it down, and then, you know, kind of like, row, 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 and it's like barking and trying to ward them away from Tav. And the spirit sort of looks down at this this dog, like almost confused on its face, like not sure what it's being attacked by. Um, and that is going to be the end of our first round of D&D combat. Bit of a slow one, but that's okay, because we're learning the game. I do have some bad news, though. Because no. <laughs> no. at the start of the second turn, this other standing oh, thing. Oh, nice. oh, nice. oh, nice. oh. And they're bigger. What are they? Whoa. Oh, that's like that chunky is... monsters. So these Jeez. look very similar to the spirits that, that you've. That these unstable spirits, but these don't look human. These look like they've been stitched together by, you know, the wing and an arm of an owl bear and a crocodile's head, like these almost horrific experiments, but spiritual and, and made of magic almost. Right, like and they kind of baby. glitch and, <laughs> and you can hear like noises, but it's echoey and distorted as they do, um, as they begin to kind of move forward. But that's gonna bring us all the way back up to the top with Will. Blade of the Frontiers. I'm gonna attack this guy. The glass knight. Yeah, yeah I want to attack this glass knight. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, how would you like to attack him? Is this with a rapier? What would you like to do? He's close to me, isn't he? Yeah, he's oh, right next to you. Yeah, he's right next to you. He's up in your face, like swords clashing. You know, imagine because also like this is six seconds. Like you've probably exchanged, like you've parried and blows. Oh, yeah. And, like like Zell, you miss with those attacks, but you're probably still like fending off yeah, your yeah. own attacks and stuff like that as well. Imagine cool cinematic combat. I'm gonna pull my rapier and I'm gonna attack the glass knight. Okay. Do you yeah. say anything, yes. or is this just like you know lunge with a parry or you know or something like that? I'm just gonna say you'll pay for that. Oh, nice. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. All right. So this is plus your rapier's attack bonus. So d20 plus your rapier. Attack. Okay. Yeah. Plus five, I believe. 18. 18 nice. plus 5, 23 nice. is easily a hit. Nice. Easily. Um, and then plus, plus 3. 6. So 9 points of damage. Uh, so you watch as you... You'll pay for that and you thrust. And where the arrow shot from Asterion kind of cracked it, a little bit of frosting from Gale. Thank you. Uh, you strike <laughs> and you Forget see that. the cracks almost touching from your two strikes. And as they do, the whole night just bursts into pieces. Oh. Yay! Yeah. The blade of front of you, you just shatters in front of you like an ornament. <laughs> turning to dust. However, the spirits don't seem to be, you know, they're still going about their business. Like, they don't seem to be like disappearing now that the, the night is gone. But yeah, this creature, which you saw like took some pretty big swings at you, like mm -hmm. is now destroyed. That's how it's done, guys. It's how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what you, that's why you came back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Long time. Yeah. Uh, would you like to move or do a bonus action, Will? Um, I would like to... <sighs> Now, keep in mind, you do have a couple of these guys next to you, so if you move away, they might get an opportunity attack at you. That's basically what they call it, like um, like Karlak and you did when something moves past you. If you move away, they'll get to do the same thing. If you want to, you can risk that free attack from the spirits and move somewhere else, or you can stay where you are and just next turn keep fighting. I'm going to stay where I am. Alrighty, yeah. perfect. That sounds great. Uh, in that case, we go to Gale of Waterdeep. Okay. 
Oh, couple of things. Do. Yes. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. No, he's looking. I'm, he's ready. I'm mixing it up. I'm going to try and mix it up. <laughs> I'm tempted with the with the new ones that have just arrived. Yeah. Doing some sort of thunder wave. Oh, oh yeah. Moving them as far away. That'd be good. Now I'm going to tell you <coughs> the way the thunder wave works. If you want to read it out for us, yeah. Because there's a little bit about the how the area that it affects. I'll yes. A good point. Uh, each creature in a 15 foot cube originating. Yeah. Um, so the way that that works, Gail, for you is imagine from your miniature, yeah. You draw like a little 15 foot, so three square, nine by nine cube, directly connected to you. Right. right. So if you wanted to do that, do what I would I'd recommend is you would move to yeah. like here, yeah. And then you can hit all yeah. three of them. Yeah, let's yeah, do yeah. that. Is that yeah. what you want to do? Yeah, let's yeah. do yeah. that. I love it, I love it, I love <laughs> it. Yeah. Why not? So if you can continue just reading so we get the rest of the effect. Uh, right, so on, uh, on a failed save, a creature takes 2d8 thunder damage and is pushed 10 feet from you. Nice. Okay. On a successful save, the creature takes half as much damage and is pushed. Constitution, Constitution save. Constitution save. Yeah, yes. perfect. So that's, I have to make that, so we're going to yep. do that. The other question I'm going to introduce, because we're kind of slowly learning mechanics, is you can cast that at first level and it will do yep. 2d8 thunder damage. Yep. If you cast it at second level, because you're a third level wizard, yes, I am. you can do it as <laughs> 3d8 thunder damage. You get extra damage, but you've only got a couple of second level slots. <laughs> this is the choice. But if you want to, you, know, you could wipe all three of these things out in one spell. Do it. Let's do, do it. it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Right. Second level spell. Let's yeah. do it. All right. On the second sheet of your character sheet, uh, you have yeah. something called your spell save DC written up at the top, very top. Spell save um, DC, yes. Yes, what number is that? 13. 13, so that's the number I have to beat for these monsters to resist it. <laughs> and I will tell you that their constitution save is zero. Hey. So I don't get a bonus. So I have to roll a 13 or higher three times for these creatures yeah. to save. First one succeeds, mm. I roll a 17. Oh. The second one fails, I roll a five. And the third one succeeds, I roll a 16. So they take half damage. The ones that succeeded okay. are going to take half damage. The okay. one that failed takes the full amount of damage. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, you're casting at second level, so 3d8s. So you, just like uh, Neil stole your dice, you can steal uh, his right. dice. I bequeath it. Uh, and uh, you. If, uh, if, uh, can you pass That's yours down as well? Which one is that uh, one? It's, the well. diamond. it's like the little diamondy shaped one. Okay. Perfect. Right. Sharing is caring, everyone. That's what we love All to right. see. Right, and then see how much damage we get. What's that? It's uh, a six, eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven points of damage. Not bad. So you watch, and they're pushed back. If they fail, they're also pushed back uh, ten feet as well. So you watch as this one is pushed back and it evaporates immediately. Yes. And because you pushed it back, when it dies, its explosion doesn't hit you because you launched it away from you, <laughs> sending it flying, there you go. and then lands off in some bushes somewhere. The other two, however, because they take the half damage, just flies out the bushes. Take, uh, they take five because we always round down, yep. right? So they are still up and they don't get pushed back. Oh. And you see, they're heavily damaged, kind of almost like pieces of these creatures, uh, a feathered arm, a kind of scaly tail have been blown away and almost d dissolved, but they are still <laughs> And now they look at you with hungry oh, eyes, no. kind of like shuffling towards hungry you. Hungry eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Does Gail's hair also get like a little bit of like... <laughs> oh yeah, there's definitely like, you. They're, 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 all of you would hear yeah. this cacophonous boom, <laughs> as this like wave a force emanates from Gale's hands, his robes blown back, and everything as you uh, the boots revealed. <laughs> <laughs> the boots fully revealed. They are gorgeous. As a reaction, of Starry just has a single tear down the eye, and oh, sumptuous. <laughs> and <that is> just <laughs> amazing. Um, so, Gale, you've moved, you've cast a spell. That was one of your second level spells, so make sure you mark off your spell slot as well. Um, so, it was one of your second spells you've marked right. off. All right, we go to Karlak next. Now, the problem with. <laughs> Destroying whatever those things are next to me. Yes. Is I'm gonna kill the scratch. They blow up. And the poor so dog do doesn't yeah, know well, that. Yeah, that's not gonna work. So, so I'm quite inspired mm -hmm. by Gale. I'm gonna throw a javelin at the one that's just sitting in the doorway. Just sitting? Or, or, or the one that Gale's just, the, that they just kind of blasted, or a different one? There's one in front that hasn't come off the board. That's banging between the ascending stuff. These ones? Yeah. This one? Yeah, perfect, okay. But also, reach? like, if you want to do something that's not on your sheet, like if you, I don't know, want to try and pick up Scratch and like... I'm on fire, eat. dear. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Very good point. Set fire to the dog, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, set fire to the dog. I right can't touch the things I love. Um, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, if you want to pick up that javelin and try... Yes. Flaming javelin. Flaming like javelin. pretty cool. Flaming yeah. javelin. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So um, now, the only thing I'm going to remind you, you have an enemy within range of you, range attack, you're going to be at disadvantage because the spirit might use that opportunity to try and attack you. 
don't want the dog to die. You don't want the dog to die. <laughs> it's it's almost like, like I moved the dog in yeah, on purpose yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> to make things interesting. <laughs> I wonder if there's a bonus Stupid action. Dog. Yeah. I can use the um, training whistle that I've been using on the side with yeah. Scratch to train him to get out of the bucket. Absolutely, you can do that. Tent. Yeah, absolutely, you can do that. We'll do that as an animal handling check. I'd yeah. say it's a bonus action. Yeah, it's okay. quite quickly. Like, you've got a little whistle. <laughs> You kind of blow it, and that, that's you've been trying to scratch to like you know. Let's do that back first. Off. Sure. Yeah. All right. Good. I'll let you do that. Give me an animal handling check. <laughs> That'll be plus three. Plus three is pretty good. To a d20. Uh, d20. Yep. Yeah, plus three, and it's going to be a low DC. I'm going to set a low. Fourteen. Fourteen. Plus. Three. Easily enough. Seventeen. You kind of let out this loud like. I've been practicing. <laughs> <laughs> um, scratch his little ears, pop up, and he knows, and I'm just going to give him, him a free disengage, and Yay. he's going to back off. Back Yay. to the back Good bed. boy. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so we'll say that's your, that, was that was your bonus action. Um, so now you've got your action free. And, nice. uh, yeah. I'm feeling kind of... So... I'm trying to see what I can see. So they're still up. They're still in battle. Those two are still so that up. That one that's furthest away. I want to these, just push them back into these the void. These four are still up. This one is uh, sorry. I think like, like a, this one is badly injured. But like yeah, these. But these you might have it on the next go. Oh, yeah. The difficulty is the I choices. Think maybe I should now that now that the dog is safe. Yeah. Mm, chop, I'm going to change everything that I've said. Yep. And I'm going to go back to um, uh, yeah. Let's let's just great tact it in the face. All right, let's great. Let's, let's go for great. it. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. that's, that's kind of so a thing. D twenty plus your great axe attack bonus. Yeah. Fourteen altogether. Fourteen is enough. Yeah. These things aren't that hard yeah. to hit, uh, um, and this one's pretty badly damaged as well. Uh, D twelve is like the one that looks Football. like a D twenty. Yeah, it looks like a D twenty, but it's not. Three plus two five. Do it's it. enough. Yeah. Shatters. Uh, and again, unfortunately, I'm going to need yep. Karlak and Will, as you are both within 10 feet, yep. to make a dexterity saving throw. As Karlak's axe dissolves yes. another one of these spirits as it's reaching out, probably for the invoked duplicity, actually, rather than to have. Um, but it's uh, reaching out, yeah, you chop it and it bursts into magic. Dexterity saving throws from you both, please. D20? Yes, please. Yeah, plus your dexterity <laughs> saving throw bonus. <laughs> That's a six, isn't it? That's eight. Eight. Damage. Eight, another eight from Will as well. But I take half. Damage. You do, uh, you, you do, yeah, yeah, this is gonna be it. So both failed, unfortunately, and it's gonna be uh, only two points of force damage each. It's just kind of like a buffet of I energy. Am not one you, are, <laughs> you are spending it. You fast. are so brave. <laughs> <laughs> You're so brave. <laughs> I, like, I, like, I, just, I like the idea at the end of this like combat, everybody's like, You're right. If you're right, we'll just cover it. Well, <laughs> I will say, some of you might be joining Will because as these spirits go, these oh, two Christ. are going to rush up on uh, our uh, 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 <laughs> And these ones here, two of them are going to attack Tam. Uh, this one is going to attack the illusion of the invoked oh, duplicity. Right. And it just does. It just goes through the illusion. Like, because it's, it's not real, so the creature attacks, it wastes its attack. Um, the ones that attack Tav. Because Tav is paralyzed, yep. I'm going to have them hit it automatically. Yep. Um, and you you see that that swirling pattern of magic, and like you see almost like their fingers bend yeah. way too far backwards, yeah, yeah. and their neck kind of crick, and something is happening to them. Um, and you can see that whatever spell is, as Tav's life is probably, you know, they're taking damage, is, is growing and, and speeding up. Um, the other two are going to attack poor Gale of Waterdeep. After all I've done. After all you've done. Unbelievable. Uh, so I'm gonna roll. I need. What is your AC, Gail? Uh, and you have two. So one is with mage armor, one is without. You are currently without your currently mage without armor. Twelve, fifteen. Twelve. So yeah, 12, it's the first 15. one. Twelve is without mage armor. Yeah. So I need to be a twelve. And I do for the first mo uh, first spirit and for the second spirit. I do again. It's unbelievable. Unfortunately. Unbelievable. Um, this game. This game. Honestly. It's gonna be <laughs> six points of damage from the first. Oof, oof, oof. And three points of damage for the next, so nine in total. But yeah, six and three. So you watch as Gale is buffeted by these spirits and these kind of horrid creatures. As they slam into you. Oof. As they do so. However, that is all of the spirits that have now gone. Uh, that guy's dead. Uh, so we go to Shadowheart. Right. Here Our we plan. go. I love it. So A plan. we've got here. Pass without trace. Okay, nice. Which is a veil of shadows and silence radiates from you, masking you and your companions from detection. For the duration, each creature you choose within 30 feet of you, that's quite a big radius. That, that would be everybody. That would be everybody. Mm. Uh, 
has a 10 plus 10 bonus to dexterity stealth checks and can't be tracked except by magical means. A creature that receives this bonus leaves behind no tracks or traces of its passage. So I think, right, we're kind of fucked at the moment. Mm. So let's hide, essentially. Let's get everyone out of the way, especially Tab. So I'm going to recruit who we've got nearby, baby Bezel. Um, we can grab it because he's like floating in the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She. Yeah, well, that, and it's, it's, we, you know, for, because then it could be anyone's tab. It's the idea that, yeah, they're completely covered by this illusion, so we don't, so, you know, so can't we see. can like, you can just it. grab them and just, yeah, and I think they are floating up. In the I air. think we get the fuck out of the way. Okay. That's what, what you, you would do, like to do. What, yeah, you what can discuss you it briefly. Have time to discuss I was doing my hair. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> you say <laughs> that, didn't you? I did a little bit. <laughs> we get. I'm putting a spell on all of us so yeah. that we can't be tracked by this. Oh, so I'll tell you what, awesome. actually, okay. Jen, have Shadow Heart make an Arcana check for me. Okay. So roll a d20 plus your Arcana skill bonus. What's my Arcana? So it's on your skills. None. Okay. That's so it's just the d20. Worth a roll. Eight. Eight. Yeah, it's you know that the pass without a trace spell is very good at like helping people camouflage. It doesn't render you invisible or things like that. There's a chance that these things are tracking Tav by some magical means, and that's why they gunned for Tav initially. So they might be able to follow it still, but there's also a chance that Pass Without a Trace might negate that if they are using some sort of magical means to trace, and it might completely they might not be able to sense Tav at all if you cast a spell on them. You don't know. If you had rolled higher, I might have I, I might have been able to say that. Oh, like actually, you think this will work, or mm. you don't think it will. Mm. I could I could use mirror image, which would put three <coughs> duplicates. Nice. Yes. Because that's you could only cast it on yourself, unfortunately. Yeah, you can't cast it on someone else and create images of them. You could create three images of yourself, and it kind of helps protect you. You should give it a go. All right. Yeah. Then let's give it a go. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. I am gonna do this as because this is very this is like an unusual use of this spell, but I love it. I love the concept of it. <laughs> so you can definitely try. You're doing it wrong. No, 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 no. no, no. We're gonna no, catch Jen, you I want to make it clear. You are not doing anything okay. wrong. It's just unexpected. Um, so what I'm gonna say is you can definitely grab Tav and try and hide as well. But I'm also gonna roll for these spirits, and I'm gonna roll to see if they have some means of like detecting, you know, if it's a magical way that they're tracking Tav, or if it's just visual sight. Because if it's visual sight. Like they can still see them, like it doesn't turn If they're tracking them through some sort of magical sense, this might just mean that these spirits can't see any of you. So I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna roll and see. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna say that they unfortunately can. I rolled very high. If I rolled oh. low, if I rolled, so basically I was doing like a, if it's above 10, they can. If, the, if it's under 10, they can't. This case, yeah, you cast the spell, you feel the shroud kind of cover you all, making you feel like you can blend in, that you can hide. Um, but these spirits still seem to be aware of what's going on until you physically maybe can get into the woods, get behind like a tent and try and hide or something like that. Then you'll have the plus 10 for the stealth. Would that therefore affect me as a hide? Oh yeah, you are definitely like easily able to hide if you would like to on your turn but it has to be on your turn all right okay. um would you like to move oh, never mind yeah um yeah. what would you like to move to i would like to move i want to go and protect tab a bit okay. i don't know why i'm so protective of tab. Really, <laughs> i really, I tab really have bonded you, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i've bonded with tab hard. well i think to make it clear so that there's a very good reason for you guys to be venturing you all know that like tab's the one who's helping you deal with this you know, problem, this tadpole problem, things like that. And there's some sort of connection in that you're probably going to need them alive, so... <laughs> Sometimes you just hand wave reasons. the reason. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing <laughs> Shadow Heart, she's probably romancing Tav. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Hey, okay. Plus, okay. Tav's owe pretty much all of us money. Yeah, yeah, there you yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Lots yeah. of money. Yeah. Lots yeah. Of Still money. didn't find that pack. Mm. Still don't know where that is. <laughs> um, <laughs> Actually, unless it's behind where I am right now. Could be. Could be. All right, could I might be. Do well, let's find out on your turn. Let's do it. All right, so Shadow Heart, unfortunately, but still gaining the benefits of the the pass without a trace spell. I did. It was very very creative. I really liked it. Uh, that is them. Uh, we go to they're dead. Uh, Asterian. <coughs> Asterian. Um, um, what would you like to do? Cool. Okay. So perceptive search search like perceptive tests are actions. They're not actually passive. On. I'd say you could do it as a bonus action. Okay. Um, In this instance, a quick a quick a cursory glance. So we're at camp. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that was the same. We're at camp. <laughs> These things are, can be hurt by weapons, weapons, and magical means, and pretty much anything we throw at them. As I'm by the log, it looks like a pile of logs mm -hmm. over there, which is which would be for our camp uh, yep. fire. 
it would stand, because it's obviously a bit of a danger, that it would stand to reason that any oil or any something like that, lamp oil or something, would also be down there. Yeah, I'd say that stands to reason, yeah, yeah. There's so, logic there. Okay. You're not going to like this. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> so what I'm thinking... Not again. What I'm thi- thinking... He's got the baby oil again. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we Ease go. Ease the tension, Dad. Um, so what I'm thinking, <laughs> what I'm thinking of, of one or two things. I can either just do a hot shot at one of those things there yeah. to help alleviate. Yeah. Or I could do something even more fun, which is throw a lamp like a lantern at those two and if you'll allow uh, if you allow me or not to then shoot the lamp in midair to cover them in oil that he could then set them afire i would say i absolutely i'm obviously going to allow it but this is pretty tricky so it's going to be a twofold thing right as your action yeah and you've not used your bonus action because to to concentrate around you didn't do that so say like you just curiously look i would say that what this would be is you're going to give me two attack rolls. Yep. One to throw the lamp yep. and see if you can get it in the right area to do it. Yep. And then the other one to strike the lantern while it's, it, like, shoot the arrow uh, and hit the lantern while it's in midair. Yep. If you fail the first one, the lantern will go somewhere where you don't want it to go. Like, it might move more over towards Gale, it might move away from the enemies. Yep. If you miss on the second one, then you obviously just miss the lantern and it will fall down. So it's risky. But if it does work, <coughs> I will have it do basically like a like a 10-foot cube, like an area of, like, burning oil, basically, yep. kind of launches down on it. That's so, so. Uh, Give me a second to think about it. Um, I'm prepared to take that risk, Dan. Okay, let's go for it. <laughs> Alright, perfect. So, first one, and we'll use your short bow attack for both of these, because like, yeah. you're still going to be proficient in it. Yeah, stuff. Sure. So, throwing the lens in, give me an attack roll with so, yeah, the plus bonus. Five. Plus five. Because I'm very good. <laughs> that is eight <laughs> in total. Eight? So, with. Oh, oh total. In total. Oh. Oh. No, that might be for the best scale. I've got long robes on. I've got long robes on. A very so, I just want to check. You want it really good. You wanted it to land about here. Ideally, oh. away from Gale so it wouldn't <laughs> splash him. So, one, two, three, four. Well, that's Five. kind of close to. Oh, okay. So it's actually gonna. It's only just slightly off range. It's currently you're gonna. If it's gonna be just above. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Just a bit warm. You're fine. Just, just, fine. just, just, just fine. eyebrows of gold. So, so now to see if you can hit the lantern. It's, gone like here it's on basically one. over this guy. If you hit it now, it will hit Gale and the two creatures. Um. <laughs> <laughs> You've got I a few mean, seconds. It's fine um, for the end. All right. Fuck it. <laughs> Uh, that's a 7 plus 5, that's 13. 13. Uh, 12. Uh, 12. 12. 12. 12. I'm going to say it's a small... Mm. Do I knock it off? Do I just knock it in the air and it spins around and hits somewhere else? Uh, I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, it's it's too small. <laughs> like, a 12 is not enough because it's quite a small, hard target. So you fire the arrow. Uh, it flings the lantern off into the far distance, like somewhere over here. Or and then it's as far to the top. That was all our food! Right. Yeah. Well, actually, no, I'd say that with that, you hit, like, the metal casing. It doesn't shatter it and just kind of, like, cartwheels it. And so there's okay. this lantern that's all bent and buckled, but that's it. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, very cool. Would have been amazing. Amazing. If it peed off. And, uh, as and a that's the fun of the It's a free action, I'm just going to shout out, I saved you, Gail! <laughs> there was a flying lantern at your head, you're welcome! You are so lucky! <laughs> <laughs> Lazel, let's make up for it, let's hit big. Right. Well, so Gail's pretty much fucked, is he? No. The, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're dead now. Oh, we'll yeah. <laughs> but you also see these two, the ones in front of you, the ones that attack Tav, and if you don't think that if they do that again, that's going to be bad. Great, news. right. So let's get rid of those two then. Let's right. try and um, let's try and kill them. How do I do that? So you can make an attack against one of them because uh, you've got to choose which one you're going to attack. No, I can't attack both. Of them. <coughs> uh, so it, I do have a long sword. You do have a long sword. <laughs> a I mean, you can try sword. if you want to try and like do like a sweeping cleaving blow. I would blow, love that. Yes. Sure. What I would say with that is you target one if you do enough damage to kill it yeah any remaining damage will go into the next one how about that yeah nice. that, that sounds like a deal all right sure right what cool. do i do this so one? this is uh the big d20 and then what's your great so you add your great sword bonus and it's so your attacking five. with your great sword so you're adding Don't plus five down this time if it's another four that dice is going it's to a 19 yeah. 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 now 
<laughs> this is a great opportunity because you're a Battlemaster fight. You definitely want to make this one of your Battlemaster moves because then you get extra right. damage on top of okay. it. Okay. So which one would you like to use? I would like, like to use a menacing attack. Menacing attack. Great. So what damage does your greatsword do on your middle plus column? Plus five. So what's the next oh, column along? 2d6 plus three. All right. Massive. So you're going to need 2d6 plus three. Wow. And then menacing attack adds a d8 as well. So we're going to roll all of that together. So you're going to need to probably borrow a d6 off Neil. And then uh, get your d6, which is the normal looking, the regular Monopoly dice. And then the d8 is like the little diamond. This, uh, the this one, the this middle one, sized one. diamond, yeah, yeah, that's the one. And, but not this. Not that. Okay. And then you're going to add three to this. Holy cow. Someone's going to help me with the maths. Six plus five plus, is that a four? That's 15. Is that a four up that's there? That's a four, yeah. 15. 15 plus, plus five? Plus five. Oh, no, no, no. Plus, uh, plus three. Plus three. 18. 18. 18 points. Massive hit. You watch as Lazelle, the first two strikes, whiff, whiff. But then this time, you kind of, maybe it's the grunt of aggression or something like that. What do you think it is that's driven Lazelle to, like, make this this really powerful blow land? Your rage at how useless everyone has been. <laughs> <laughs> you shout something out to the rest of the team, like, uh, <laughs> and then just, you watch as, like, the tight muscles kind of, like, tense. Mouth your like body, you kind of twist your back and your sides into it. You cleave through one. And then with enough momentum, because that was such yeah. a big damage roll, you cleave into another, and both are... Oh, yeah! yeah. yeah. Woo. That nice. does mean Shabam. that both of them explode. Mm. We love to see it. Oh, no. <laughs> and unfortunately for Will... <laughs> You are in range. Karlak, you're going to have one of them, so I need one deck save oh, from you. Shit. Will, you're in range of both, shit. and Lazelle, you're in range of both, so I need you to make two dexterity saving throws, both of you, please. Oh, by the way, uh, just at a point of order, oh, not where you said, would you like to come in for a melee attack? 18. I do realize now that's well why you were trying to put me in. <laughs> I don't know what it does, but you're fine. 18. You're fine. So what did you roll? 18? 18. And then on your sheet, yes. above your skills. I'm right there with you, plus one, 19. 19. Mm. So you're getting it, you're getting it. So 19, hey. that's the first one. I need another one from you, though, because two of them exploded. It's an 11. Plus? 12. It's a success. You pass both. Thank you very much. Can't like your one. I'm going to save. Oh, I'm saving Theo to last. Five. <laughs> five plus two. It's not enough, unfortunately. You're going to take damage it's from this one. Right. And then Theo, the first one. <laughs> oh my god, like. D20. D20 okay, plus your dexterity saving throw bonus. <laughs> Whoa, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that a one? No, it's a five. A five. Not That's not good. That's a fail. That's the first one. Okay. I need you to make another one. Did you write your one? Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty I bad. Think I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> so, Karlak, kind of like you fail. Yes. You're going to take uh, you take four points of force damage. Half. Two points of force damage. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, actually, no, it's two. Uh, so, it would actually be eight. You take four. four. Yeah. Right? Um, you take eight <laughs> points of force damage. Oh, Are you still up? Yeah. Just about. And then the second one. The second one's going to. Five. Oh, dead. Well, know. you're no, not dead. No, you're not dead yet. This is the good point. So, what happens is you go to zero hit points, you are knocked kind of... I the, In the raw rules of D&D, you're supposed to go unconscious, and like you're like knocked out. I don't like that, because it means you can't roleplay and stuff. So yeah. you're kind of like dying. You can't do anything, you can't cast spells, you can't do... I'll let you like crawl <laughs> five feet, but you're basically bleeding out. You're like, oh, like kind of like, you know, the left for dead, like in your last moments, kind of like last stand. But you, okay. you can't do anything. You can speak a bit and sort of roleplay with your friends, but you're basically out of the fight. If you get healed, you come back in, you get your hit points, you're back up and stuff like that, right? Mark, do you okay. some the help up action as well? Uh, no, right? so you can stabilize somebody right. by making a medicine check and that will prevent them getting yeah. worse. Mm -hmm. But uh, the only way to get them back up is with giving hit points, right? So mm -hmm. healing spells like cure wounds, feeding them the magic potion, that kind of stuff. That's the raw rules of D&D. Um, we're going to use we're going to use that a little yep. bit because uh, otherwise it gets a bit tricky. But the other thing you need to know is on your turn now for Will, you need to make something called death saving throws. We'll get into that on your turn. Um, but you are currently at zero hit points. Um, as you watch, all of you see the Blade of Frontiers. This blast of these undead of these spiritual creatures knocks it back. Oh, boo, 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 boo. Like a street uh, fight. Like, and we knock you prone on the map. Avenge me. <laughs> <laughs> and that was on Lazel's go. Uh, so that was at the end of the round. So uh, would you like to move Lazel? You just chop through these two, bam, and then you avoid all the damage. Do you feel any kind of bad about the fact? No, no, no. Well, noted, 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 noted. Okay. I have one singular mission. That's to get rid of these little blue creatures. So apologies if Will has to be sacrificed. Will has to be sacrificed. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, sorry. Um, 
Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> right, right. What's happening with this little blue guy over there? So there's one remaining spirit next to Karlak. Yeah. Um, very heavily injured. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, uh, is he going for the image? That he was going for it, but now having sensed that it's not real, he's probably turning their attention Good back job. to Tav. So they kind of got a turn out of it. In fact, I think that one hasn't been injured yet. So yeah, and then there's two next to you. But you have used your action. So no, okay, I'm gonna move over to Gale because yep. I think he needs all the help he can cool. get, and yeah. Carla can probably Five, deal with that one. Yeah. Great, I really need your help considering you just killed one. Yeah. So you move up. Unconscious. Next to Gale. All good. So at the top of the around there is a you kind of hear a crackle and a flash this time it is not from the sending stones uh, instead you see a figure dressed in a kind of red robe uh, kind of red wizardy hat big white beard uh, as he Santa appears. Claus it's Santa Claus <laughs> Yay! Ho ho ho, adventurers! <laughs> it is effectively the Santa Claus of Faerun, as you see, and Gale, you would recognize this figure mm. immediately as they arrive as Elminster of Shadow. You asshole! <laughs> Everyone, it's Gale's, it's Gale's granddad! You call out as he sort of arrives, um, and it's like, oh, Gale, my boy, I feared that something had gone terribly wrong. Uh, what is happening? And he sort of like looks around. You um, think? Yeah, he, he looks think? around, he sees Will on the ground, he sees these spirits, he's like, well, let, let's deal with your friend first. And with a flash, these three remaining spirits, he just whoosh, evaporates with like a flash of his hair. Uh, oh, <laughs> Could have rocked off a little bit earlier. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's almost like you had to yeah. learn the game a little bit. Um, and I needed to give you an easy win in case <laughs> things went really bad. Um, no. Wait, so, quite well, uh, the forest of oh, tutorial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you watch as Elminster kind of like banishes these spirits away, even preventing them from exploding to like kind of harm. He almost just banishes them with a spell. Um, and then he looks, uh, he'll probably look to you, uh, my dear, I think that your companion may need a little assistance, uh, as you see Will kind of like, uh, like blood kind of pouring out of him. Um, but any of you can at this point, uh, the only thing I want to do before we finish things off, because we are going to have to end our first sort of episode around about now. I'll go to break. Yeah, go to break. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Um, but uh, before we go to break, Will, I would like you to make a death saving throw. Uh, so what this is, is you're going to roll a d20, and if you get a 9 or lower, you get a mark, like a, a check mark, a bad mark. You don't want those. If you roll a 10 or above, you get a good mark, and you want those. If you roll a 20, you get back up as if you're alive. Uh, if you roll a 1, you get two bad check marks. If you get three bad check marks, you're dead. Uh, if you get three good marks, you're okay. <laughs> so, roll a d20, and we're looking for a 10 or higher. Nope. What we got? Well, that's a 6 or a 9. Either way, it's not good. <laughs> Normally the dots on, on the bottom. bottom. Yeah, oh, yeah, thank you, Sim. It's not good. It's so you watch. It's like Will's. Like maybe it's like the, the color in his cheeks is fading. Like kind of like you know the bloods. Your eyes are beginning to kind of waver as you are falling deeper into death. Um, but we will see if the companions we can maybe allies uh, can heal or stabilize them uh, after our little break here. Uh, thanks for watching for part one. We'll be back with Baldur's Gate Cast D and D Part Two very shortly. See you yeah. There. Hello everybody and welcome back to part two of our very special Baldur's Gate cast, uh, Baldur's Gate 3 cast, play d and I'm your Dungeon Master Mark Sherlock Humes and we are joining us back in the action to give you a little bit of a recap. Uh, our party of adventurers awoke somewhere in the wilds of the Sword Coast. Their companion, the champion, uh, commonly called Tav, seemed to be afflicted by some sort of strange magical spell taking over their body, uh, changing them, warping them. Knowledge from Gale of Waterdeep revealed that the spell was being channeled from far away and was a very powerful and ancient magic. And just as Will and Karlak were beginning to discern that there may be something else afoot, attackers, strange magical spirits, glass knights appeared from portals and tried to attack the companions. Fending them off with a little help from Elminster of Shadowdale at the very end, the party now find themselves in the camp but with a badly injured Will on the ground, bleeding out. Uh, and that is where we're going to jump back in, my friends, uh, with this little adventure of ours. Um, so, 
We'll do it as a quick round table um, as, uh, yeah, what do you guys want to do? I'm going to have it, Will, you've just made that failed death saving throw. So you've got one of your check marks towards death, basically. If you get two more, you are dead. <laughs> and we don't want that to happen. <laughs> so, um, ideally. Um, so, yeah, what is everybody doing? The, the battlefield is cleared. Veilminster has kind of banished the remainder of these spirits. The portals seem to have closed. Um, but you are still sort of in that sort of like moment of like, there is still some sense of danger as Will is down. What would people like to do? I'll start the eulogy, shall I? <laughs> Dear Will. <laughs> Sorry. And um, I've got pure wounds. I'd like to cure that. his wounds. Yeah, please. absolutely. So, Shannon, you're going to go over to Will's body, and he's kind of on the ground. What does this look like? You, you tell um, me. I'm, I'm, I'm going shua, 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 over his body, <laughs> and beautiful golden light is full, is filling his wounds. Pretty. Uh, so, when you cast, if you want to read out on your card. Um, oh, I see. Does. Yeah, uh, a creature you touch, any creature uh, <laughs> rega uh, regains a number of hit points equal to one. 1d8 and your this is too your spell, wisdom, casting, your spell, spell casting ability modifier yeah, which this is spell has no effect on undead or constructs good Shit. to know good to know <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah something yeah um, <laughs> oh, baby <laughs> so your wisdom uh, your spell casting is your wisdom uh, mm. so you're going to get a d8 which is the little prism the diamond shaped kind of uh, dice not the tiny tiny pyramid but the sort of pyramid the diamond shaped this one, one? Uh, yeah that's the right one and then what's your wisdom so if you look Bye. at your character sheet uh, but is that should, might be your saving throw what's your wisdom so the uh, big box three three there you go so it's a d8 plus three mm -hmm. and then this is how many hit points Will is going to get back three three plus three six six so you start from zero as well. So if you're down, you start from zero, you get six hit points back. So you are on six hit points currently, Will. And you, you, that life kind of flutters into you. I like to rule that you're not unconscious, so you're kind of, but you feel your strength regain. You can move under your own power and you can speak and everything else. Like, what's it? And you see Shadowheart like literally weaving this magic Thank looking you. over you. Pleasure, Will. Oh. Pleasure. Don't do it again. Can I, <laughs> can I, can I uh, Karlak rolls her eyes and starts looking for a magic potion six. to help. <laughs> sure. Um, you kind of glance around, and now that there's no real threat, you know, um, Tam's body is, is suspended, but you can see that Elminster is doing something, and it seems to have calmed the spasms and things like that. So you kind of have a, a little minute here, um, and you begin kind of searching around the camp, looking through supplies. You definitely know that, like, you have things like potions and stuff like that, but Tav keeps it all in their backpack for some can, reason. Can we do the thing that I <clears throat> may have mentioned earlier? Oh, which, what, what was that thing? Uh, sort of rooting around a little bit. Oh yeah, um, maybe we're rooting around. So, so Carl and, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, <laughs> well, I'm sort of whistling while I do it. Yeah, that's uh, right. Okay. Um, so you guys are like, you're looking for a potion, <laughs> you're just looking. <laughs> um, Will, you're kind of like, you're like UC show. What about Lazel and Gail? What are you guys up to at this point? I'm. Uh, I think I'm going to go to Elminster and ask him what 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 the hell is yeah, he yeah. doing? Because we need to get on with the mission. Absolutely. <laughs> no time for any of this. This business. Chitter chatter. Yeah, absolutely. What's he doing to Tav? Okay, sure. Yeah, I think very similar. I think yeah, we'll probably go over to Elminster and go. I, I had that. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> Thanks for that, but I have it on the pad. Uh, Elminster will. Elminster look, regards you both as like other things. He's just like, oh, Gail, my friend. Yes, I'm quite certain you did. I, I detected a very powerful magical presence somewhere in the air, and I did wonder if something may have. And he sort of taps his chest a little bit. It was a bit of concern for a moment, but. Oh, thank you. I, I'm sure that you had everything <laughs> under control. I did. As it seemed. He kind of glances. <laughs> over, he glances over at Will, who's like bleeding and everything. Don't look, don't look over there. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to do with me. Uh, and, and, and my dear, Lazel, I believe I've heard the others call you, is that correct? Lazel of Kreshkalir to you. Lazel of Kreshkalir, of course. Uh, an honor to speak with one of the, the Githyanki people. Um, <laughs> and he's just sort of like, he, smi he smiles a little bit when you say that. Um, <laughs> and he says, like, ah, well, I'm beginning, a sort of, I'm beginning to understand a little of what is happening here, but I'm afraid that your companion is in. Um, no state to travel or move. This is there is a far greater force of work in all of this, I'm afraid. Can uh, you heal them? And quickly. 
The answer is no, I'm afraid, but perhaps we should wait for your companions for the full story. And he'll kind of glance towards everyone else who's going. Uh, I will say, uh, for uh, Karlak and uh, Asterion, as you guys are searching around, um, you managed to find you both, and I like the visual, if you will, of, it, <laughs> of you both eventually, like, glance over and sort of, like, nestled under the table, you see Tav's bag, and you both kind of put a hand on it from either side, <laughs> kind of glancing at each other. Um, but you both have the bag, uh, what happens next? I would like to uh, disarm the bag from her grip. Okay, uh, like, so by using a very <laughs> nimble, uh, so not strength, but using like a sort of like a, a wrist movement thingy, which I learned on the streets of Baldur's Gate to sure. outdo people uh, when they were trying to get. And it's kind of like, like, are you going to resist? Do you want to like let him have the bag, or are you like, nope? It's not a surprise. What are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Look over there. And then I'm going to try and like just like, sure. it out of her hand. Well, how about you both? <laughs> how, about, how about you give me a sleight of hand check, Asterion? Yep. And how about Carly gives me an athletics check to yep. see if you can just iron grip this bag? <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's like, oh, and then it's just holding it. <laughs> just still hand yeah. Hand yeah. Hand yeah. But well, let's see. Let's see who wins. Uh, uh, so this is a d20 plus your skill. So sleight of hand for Asterion yep. and Ooh. athletics for Carly. Uh, that is I'll a... I'll let Neil reveal his uh, role first. So that's a, that's a 16 plus my sleight of oh. hand of 7. Oh! 23! Oh. 23. You've won. Oh. <laughs> so maybe... Uh, 9. Is this more like Carlex? Like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah totally. But in, in, my he, in my head, I'm like, I completely outmaneuvered her. Sure, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to tell you, you the group what you get, but yep. obviously Asterion yeah, yeah, has sure. it. Yeah. Um, in Tav's bank, you find a lot of odds and ends. You find like a pot, uh, you mm. know, very many books, like a surprising amount of books. <laughs> An so unnecessary much amount of yeah. books. Yeah, like cups. Yeah, cups. Candles. Bones. But what you do find that is useful, <laughs> um, maybe not ex especially to Asterion, because some of it is scrolls and magic, but you do yep. find a number of items. Uh, you find two potions of healing. Oh, okay. uh, if you want, you can pop it on the back of your character sheet as well, write it down. Uh, anyway. Uh, oh yeah, actually, I forget that. I gave you a double-sided one. That's right. Uh, so two potions. Here. Two potions of healing, yep. uh, which will do 2d4 plus two hit points when you drink them. 2d4 mm -hmm. plus two, do you say? Plus two, yes, please. Yeah, okay. In fact, if I may have an assistant somewhere, bring me one of the potions from the... the, the Amazing! Uh, from the thing which I'd completely forgotten. Um, I will summon it to my hand while I reveal other things. <laughs> um... Thank you very much, assistants. Ah. So I will pass that to you. I only have the one, but it's a okay. count double. Um, you also find two other things. Um, <laughs> no, sorry, many other things, actually. Uh, you find a number of scrolls. Yep. Uh, a scroll of detect thoughts. Okay. And a scroll of counter spell. Oh. And then the last thing you find are two arrows of fire. So these are like arrows with like kind of wool and, and tinder and things wrapped around the head and soaked in oil uh, that you can fire as well. And they deal an extra d4 of fire damage yep. uh, to the creature and any creatures within 10 feet have to make a save or they take additional fire damage. Okay. So it's kind of like a little kind of burst, burst arrow basically. So counter spells detect thoughts. Yes. And then two arrows of fire. Okay. I'm gonna hand Carl like a, like, I find a yo-yo. So I find these things put and go, oh look what I found! And I hand Thank him a yo-yo. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. It's one of those really cool yo-yos. It's, like, really, like, it's a spinny <laughs> thing with a light. Look, it breaks up. It's, it's made of crystal. Cool. <laughs> As I put in the other stuff in my yeah, bag. Yeah, yeah. Sure, 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 sure. sure. Okay. Uh, no, honestly, yeah. you take it. You take it. <laughs> All right, guys. So while that's happening, you guys are kind of fumbling with that, and Asterion's filling his things. Yep. Like, show heart and Will. So, like, yeah, you, you've helped Will up, mm. and, like, the two of you there. What do you do? Do you want to join Lazelle and Gale? Like, is there anything you guys want to do or <coughs> say or anything at all? Like, yeah, I, I want to I wanna eavesdrop on the whole... Sure, sure, sure. Well, oh. not even... I just want to muscle in on the uh, <laughs> yeah, we go elements to conversation mm -hmm. before Lazelle pisses him off. I mean, off. yeah, <laughs> you, you, you easily pick up on the eye rolls and sighs as you begin to approach. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sure, sure. And like, you can see, like... Um, uh, elements to kind of turns and sort of like nods his head and sort of like greeting and respect as you approach. Uh, what about Will? What's Will? Um, I'm still pretty weak. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say to my party that I need to be looked after. <laughs> and if anybody has <laughs> 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 anything any, any, yeah, that could possibly. <laughs> 
possibly help me. Mm-hmm. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say as well that because you're not in any danger, and this is probably going to be a bit chatting, what we can do is we can count this as a short rest. Okay. Um, so short rest. Some of you will get your things. You get all your spell slots back because you're a warlock. So your uh, your darkness spell slot, you get that back because you're back up to two spell slots. Um, you can also, for example, Gail, you have a special ability called Arcane Recovery where you can regain spell slots if you like as well. Yeah. Um, uh, your action surge comes back later, mm-hmm. for example. Okay. Back. The other thing you can do on a short rest is you can heal yourselves as well. Mm-hmm. You have an, you have these things called hit dice. You have three of them because you're level three, and the type is determined by your class. So for Will, it's a D8. Uh, for Karlak, it's a D12 because they're a barbarian. I think Shadowheart is a D8. Lazelle is a D10. D8 for the rogue and D6 mm-hmm. for the poor wizard. Um, and you can spend those dice. You roll it. You add your constitution, and you get that many hit points back. But you only have a certain amount of these hit dice per day that you can spend right so you have three of them currently you can roll them one at a time so you can be like all right i'm going to see how many hit points are back oh i got max hp that's pretty good i'm going to just spend the one so you can choose if any of you i think that will was literally oh no gail took a little bit i of took a little well. bit yeah so, so feel do. free to spend those as you wish um so yeah like you just mark those off you've got three of them Send yeah. as many as you want to as well and that's to kind of represent like you taking a breather getting your energy back you know it's not always hit points represent your physical injuries but it can be your energy your like health and your like your mentality and stuff as well all right yeah cool i'm gonna roll for that all right cool that. so yeah. you get the, di- the d8 the little diamond uh that's it that you had the first one that's the one yeah. and then what's your constitution uh plus two plus two so every every time you roll that you add a plus two so you roll it once and get plus two and that's how many hit points you get back <sighs> D and D. one. A one. So that's three hit points you get back. So you get okay. to add three hit points. You spend one hit dice. Now you can spend another hit dice if you want and gain some more HP back if you like. <laughs> do it. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, why not? Right? Like. Okay. Three. Three. So you six. You get six hit points back now. Okay. The math. Okay, this, cool. this is the math time of hit points. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it? So you're probably like feeling pretty good at this yeah, point. Like right, maybe right. like you're still bruised. You're probably aching a little yeah. bit, but you're feeling a lot, lot better. Mm-hmm. Um, and things like potions can be used like in battle, but also if you want to top up your hit points and things like that as well. I but, might do the same actually. Yeah, sure. Why yeah. Not? So for you, it's a D6 because uh, okay. you're a little squishy wizard, I'm afraid, Gail. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a D6 plus your constitution, which plus, is plus two. Plus two. So D6 plus two. A three. So five. <laughs> five. Yeah. I'll take a five. All right, you take a five. I'll take a five. I'll take a nice five. Why I'd not, love right? to. I'd love to get a five back uh, after <laughs> sitting down for an hour. Exactly. But yeah, so like Lazel and Shahart, you're sort of like you know, talking to Elminster and Gary, kind of listening in. People are beginning to filter in now. Um, and uh, he says, <laughs> "Well, I can tell that whatever is affecting this champion is very old and powerful magic. There is something unnatural about it." It is... Gail, have you had time to examine this effect? What what could you tell me? What did you learn of it? Well... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks How much were you remembering? Well, it's, it's very old and it's from far away. <laughs> yes, you picked so, up on that. I did pick up on that. It's <laughs> very good. My, with my stealth. Yes, yeah, very good. Um, You're welcome. I think that I could pinpoint <laughs> that this... I've never seen a spell channeled from such a great distance. It is being channeled from a city far to the south, beyond the Sword Coast, a place called Athkatla in the nation of Arm. Um, Question. I've been around for 250 years, 300 years, something like that. Yeah. Have I, before I became a vampire, mm-hmm. would have, I, I was a Baldurian. Uh, yeah, Baldurian. I was yeah. a magistrate. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how widely travelled mm-hmm. I may have been. Could I see if I've actually been to Arm? And yeah, you absolutely it? can. In fact, I would say everybody, with the exception of Karlak and Lazel, because Karlak, you've been in Avernus <coughs> for many, many years and stuff mm-hmm. like that, right? Well, actually, you would have been around before then, actually, yeah. So I'd say Karlak can also make this. Lazel lives on the... So you, you probably aren't going to be familiar with human cities and things like that. But everybody else, you can all make history checks. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and this will be to see how much you might know of this place called Afghan. Well... <laughs> So this is a D20. I was, I was rather drunk when I went there, darling. Yeah. I can't remember much about the place. Much. There might be like just generic information you all know uh, anyway. I got a five. Yeah, there'll be stuff you know, but it'll be generic. Yeah, generic like, stuff. I got 13. 13 for Shadowheart. Great. Okay. Surprising considering. Three minus one. 
it's you. Never heard of it. So two for Kai, and then what was that? 16, 16 for Will? Uh, 14. 14. Okay. I'd say um, most of you know sort of like the generic stuff. Um, Very strong whiskey. Yeah. The And then Will, you might know a little bit more as well, because you kind of got the highest, you got above a 15. Um, you all know that Athkatla is commonly called the city of coin. It is a big trade city far, far to the south in this place called Arm, which is a very mer uh, mercantile nation. Um, it's kind of the, it's like a neighboring nation to the, what's called the Sword Coast, where Baldur's Gate, Neverwinter, Waterdeep, all of these kind of cities are laid along the coast. Um, it's beyond uh, a group of mountains, I think called the Cloud Spire Mountains. Um, and it perhaps uh, there's something about it. And Karlak, you know, you're like, oh, Athkala, Athkala, oh, I know that, I know that, I know that. Like, there's something triggering in the back of your mind. Because um, I know that you have a, Karlak has a particular love of like stories of heroes and things like that, and, and would certainly remember certain heroes that were involved in something there. Um, but it's Will that you kind of remember. You're like, yeah, Athkala. About a century ago, uh, there was this big event that happened there. Um, there was this mage uh, who apparently attacked the, the place um, and it like killed a bunch of people and it was the beginning of a figure uh, who became like a hero of Baldur's Gate and, and the Sword Coast um, who's called the Baalspawn. Um, and this figure was an ally of Minsk and Jahira, the Druid of the Harpers, and many, many others. Um, and they had these grand adventures and they were known as heroes along the coast. But you remember a big part of their story took place in Athkala, but the, the details are kind of murky. Are you dis are we discussing that or is that just something that you know? Th that is up to Will. Will yeah. can say, like, if you would, would you tell that to the group? I would that? tell that to yeah. the group. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Uh, yeah. So I was in Baldur's Gate 200 yeah. years ago when these events took place. So you would have known about Savrock and the so first boss spawn and exactly. stuff. Yeah. Is so it possible I can make to add in any gaps that he may not know from my own experience as I was present in the city when it happened? Yeah, well, I think with your history check, I think you were present for the first, you were present for that first part with Savrock. Rock and Baldur's Gate, yeah. which is, uh, for those who are wondering, this is the events of the previous games, Baldur's Gate 1 and Baldur's Gate 2. Mm -hmm. So you were aware of that, but then the Ball Spawn vanished right. from Baldur's Gate, and mm -hmm. that's where that's your where memory is like, ah, oh. but Will's like, yeah, they then something happened in this place called Arm. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. Kayak, I'm very happy for like you to be like, yeah, oh yeah, Minsk, did you hear it? Like, that kind of triggers the memory of like, yeah, 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 you remember that that was all attached to that and stuff like that, right? <laughs> cool. um, okay. Uh, so yeah, so you know that. You know, uh, I would say Gale, uh, you got high enough and it's kind of related to your kind of area of expertise. Mm -hmm. You know that there is a group in an uh, Athkala called the Cowled Wizards and they kind of control magic in the city. And actually, if you use magic without their permission and a license, you can actually get in trouble. You can actually be arrested. It's illegal to use magic in the city without permission from them. If you get caught. That's why I don't go that much. If, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But it's if you get caught. Like, if you get seen out on the street casting magic, they'll come after you. But, like, you can surreptitiously get away with it, but you've got to be careful. And then for Shadowheart, because it ties to the matters of religion and faith, um, you certainly would know that there are any Shah presence in uh, Athkala is probably not huge, yeah. but it might be underground. You know that there is a great temple district with many of the other deities of the Sword Coast. Um, not Saloon. There are no temples to Saloon there. Uh, but uh, generally they tend to worship uh, Joaquin, who's like a goddess of coin. Um, Sune, which is the goddess of beauty and love. Uh, gods like Helm and Laflander, these kind of protective, noble kind of god spirits. Um, those kind of deities tend to be very, very popular. But Sune and and Joaquin especially are very um, are very prominent in that place being religious you know knowing a lot about religion and being faithful um, and so yeah Elmer uh, kind of says like I believe that the magic of this spell whatever it is is originating from from uh, from Afkabla. unfortunately it is taking much of my magical might to sort of shield whatever has happened to your friend. I've managed to delay the process, but something is infecting their mind, infecting their body, trying to almost use it for their own. But what I can do is if you are, if you wish to save this individual, this champion of which you are connected, I could send you temporarily to Athkatla. Uh, you should be protected uh, by the, the relic that you bear. And this spell, whatever it is, is shielding your companion from the, the, the tadpole's influence. So you would be free to travel to this place and then return, but you do not have much time, a few days at best. Uh, you need to find the source of this spell, and stop it, disrupt it, whatever it is. Otherwise, I fear that your companion will be lost. 
A question, man in the pointy hat. Uh, yes, um, my dear boy. So, you want us to? Well, we could theoretically turn into Gale and turn into turn into Gale. So <laughs> <laughs> we theoretically could go to this arm place, but it's leagues away. How on earth are we going to get there? As soon as possible with with that and pointing up to Tab's mm-hmm. situation. Mm-hmm. Oh. Magic. Oh, Astarian. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, magical <laughs> man. Indeed, I'm not. I am indeed. I, so I do your magic. I can spare a teleportation spell. It is a place I'm very familiar with. I can send you there, and he will hand Gale because Gale is a good friend of his, and he knows him. Yeah. He will hand. I know you, how this works. <laughs> uh, he hands Don't you touch it. Hey. Don't touch it. Must it, touch it. it, it <laughs> It's like a stone slate, um, and you know that this is uh, basically it's like a, a, a slate of spell storing. Um, Elminster pro- has probably cast a teleport spell into this, um, and if you break it, it will activate and bring you back here. Um, and he will hand that to you, Gale, and say you could use this to return to me. Um, and when your when your mission is complete, and it will return you here safely. Um, yes, uh, don't eat it. <laughs> he doesn't say. He doesn't say. Uh, Carl is like putting uh, it in. <laughs> <laughs> I promise nothing. Yeah. Um, but he says, yes, I can temper- I can send you there, uh, but this slate will bring you back. Um, but yes, you do not have much time. Uh, if I can offer you one piece of advice, uh, find connections within the city, powerful factions, people that may know what's happening. Whatever this is, whatever this source of the spell is, I have a feeling. And he kind of taps his nose, like, I know a rotten cheese when I smell one, and there is something afoot. This spell will likely cause other problems, I am certain of it. Oh, so good. be on the lookout. Um, <laughs> but uh, yes, if you are prepared, make a note. Cheesy foot. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> well, if you you understand me completely, my boy. Uh, uh, yes. Quite. Uh, too long have we travelled together that you understand my ramblings. Um, Never we just. But he will look around and say, "When you are ready, I will uh, cast the spell." Go for it. H- hang, hang on. Hang on, wait. Why are we, why are we trusting this Father oh, Christmas guy? Stop asking guy? questions. He's going to ask. Santa Claus. Yeah. 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 Not my granddad. Perhaps. <laughs> oh, my, for my apologies, my dear, I've not introduced myself. Mm. I am Elminster of Shadowdale, Archmage, uh, uh, chosen of Mistra. I'm uh, very well versed. Perhaps you've heard of some of my tales and stories? No, I haven't. Oh, I've well. Got no memories. Can, we go, can you give me an insight? Yeah. yeah. So, so there's a skill called insight, which is like reading people's body language <laughs> and things. Anybody's welcome to make yep. one. Because uh, he makes like a weird face. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I rolled two plus one, so I have no idea what a weird face is. You're like, oh, he's, yeah, he's yeah, totally he's, pleased. He's, yeah. he's very, very yeah. chill, very happy. Yeah. I've got a four That's a nine. Plus nine. Nine. And insight. Plus five. I rolled a 19. <laughs> 19. 14. 14. And I. 19. Uh, Eight. I think we've got Five. less than tens all yeah, over here. Eight. Five. Eight. Eight. Seven. 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 And you're so, old friend. Well, I was <laughs> yeah. very unsure. Yeah, yeah, Mr. You and Gail heard Mr. and son. <laughs> what? Ooh, Mine's huh? drifted off. Where? Um, yeah, Shadow Heart <laughs> will... Yeah, I th- he's genuinely quite insulted that Shadow Heart hasn't heard of him. He's, okay. There's definitely a sort of like, oh, well... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I suppose. Do you... Uh, perhaps you've not read much. Uh, <laughs> uh, very, very well known across the room. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. No, no, it's fine. It's totally fine. Anyway, <laughs> teleportation spell, ready to go. Um, it's, we're all concentrating so hard on keeping your friend alive. Uh, uh, and he sort of like gestures, but he, he is like, oh, you know, willing to answer questions if you have them. Are we bringing the dog? No. 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 God, no. I'm worried about Scratch's right. safety. Yeah. No. You see, yeah, Furlough's bad dog. Yeah. You see, this like, he kind of pops his head up. I could come with no, you. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Oh, yeah. dog sitting duty again, I see. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> um, perhaps you would be interested in my tour guide of Athcatla, though, if you're heading there. And uh, he pulls into his book. I wrote it several years ago. It should still be good. Yes, please. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. And he'll hand, he'll hand it to Will. It gives you a copy. It's like a little, it's quite a small little kind of like A5. Is a fold-out map? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It has like a little fold-out map in it and things like that. Um, it's it's very uh, localized to districts, so you can see that like it's broken down. But uh, yeah, he kind of hands that to you. He's like, "Oh, would you like me to sign it, boy?" Uh, yeah, yeah, sign oh, it. Oh, yes, of course. He pulls out <laughs> got a quill ready. Volus and get out, master author of the realms. There you are. And 
This is I'm gonna Do go you to... take your time, Will? <laughs> I'm going to go to Gail's grandfather. <laughs> yes. Just, I'm going to point to the map. Yeah. And I'm going to say, can you teleport us to where you think we need to go? Mm. Well, that is the thing, my boy. I'm not exact. I know that the spell is originating in the city, but it is a large city, and I'm not sure where. I mean, okay. if you would like me to send you to a specific area, I can. I was going to send you to the city gates, likely okay. the best place to start and explore the city. But I'm not sure exactly where the spell is taking. How about a nice brothel? No. No. The thing, you can see Elminster the starting to think. I know a few. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, uh, I will say this: it is the city of coin, my boy. Do keep that in mind. Everything of uh, within Athcatla has a cost, and you get what you pay for, as they say. I do have a question. Yeah. Um, can I whisper it into his ear? Because I'm a bit embarrassed. Yeah. So, um, I, I sort of I may know a few thieving, skilled things. Is ah. that I would like to contact the Prince of the uh, Don't tell them. I'm supposed to be. He nods and says, yeah. "Like he's just like if you have, if he whispers like if you have such contracts, then I would certainly recommend you. They would likely have information about if anything is happening in the city." Um, Do a little big. He he returns yeah. it with an even bigger. Yeah. Uh, look, we've seen that. Nobody's seen that. Look around. Yeah. Oh, oh, doesn't need to walk off. Now. Can Carl? Yeah, of course. Him, like the the magic that we were so unfamiliar, you were so unfamiliar with, mm. um, is. Would that be? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, it's, it's, but would that be something we could easily um, identify the person casting that? Is that so unusual it that is. we could pick up all of it and well, follow that? Gail, you examined the spell. You would recognise it again if you oh, were to locate the source yeah, of it. So. I'm almost no. certain. But I also believe, my dear, quite honestly, this level of magic and the nature of it, there is, some, as I said, something unsavoury, something unnatural about it. I am certain that you will will find some sort of trail, look for things out of place or, or nefarious deeds afoot, and I'm sure that there will be some sort of connection, or at least it will lead you to a clue or some such. Um, but yes, I'm, I don't think uh, the simple sort of spells to detect magic and things like that likely won't help you until you are closer to the source. You would need to find them, and I suspect that they will likely be hidden somewhere in the city. I'm going to sort of do a little covenant. <coughs> I may have a lead of sorts. When we get there, all right. Let's go then. It seems that your friend is getting rather impatient. Yeah, make sure we've what, got everything. Uh, we go. I have a question: What does Lazel look like when she's getting impatient? Like, what's her like? Does she have like habits or like? No, you know what I mean, how people like tap their foot or something. Yeah, what's the idle animation? What's the idle animation? Flicking her ears, poking Gail with them. <laughs> With the ears, like actual hands, like complete control. Most likely just hand on sword. Slow. Ready, slow. Hurry. Yeah. hurry the fuck up! Uh, with that, uh, with that last threat from Lazel, <laughs> uh, uh, one, one hand sort of channeling this energy into Tav, almost kind of forming like a, an oval barrier around them. But with the other, we'll reach out and you see this old man who just looks like this kindly, wizardly grandfather, very sort of Gandalf from Fellowship of the Ring. <laughs> His eyes become prisms of light. And you watch as the wrinkles almost seem to melt away, and this is not a man stood before you, but magic manifest. As light spills off of his body, he raises a hand, and speaking in an ancient tongue, Vothmar Kandal Elthkev Askatla! And you feel your body ripped, and you are suddenly sailing through the air, light and vision and sound blurring around you in a swirling mist. And that's where I'm going to have to ask our good narrator friend to step in once more. Oh, yeah! Oh. Yeah. It should be on there, my dear. Okay, there, okay. Enjoy your sight reading. Oh, hi, thanks. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi. 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 What's she been up? Well, everybody mine. Okay, good. As the swirling mists of Elminster's spell fades, you are engulfed in the sounds of a vibrant, bustling city. A far cry from the relative quiet of the wilds you have recently been exploring. The sounds of merchants selling their wares, city dwellers in frantic and passionate conversation, the shouts and clanking armour of patrolling guards. 
These sounds bombard your ears as the smell of sweat and sickly perfume, coffee beans, and the salty brine of the sea assail your nose. Before you stands a city much like Baldur's Gate, a metropolis of homes and traders divided into several districts. The buildings are built from cream-colored stone and have roofs with brightly painted tiles and slates. An enormous bridge, large enough to feature temples and buildings of its own, spans a wide and deep river and connects the city divided across it. This is Athkatla, the city of coin. Woo! It's great having that. It's like saved my voice. It's lovely. <laughs> so yes, you arrive in Athkatla, the city of coin, and this is a pretty big, vast city. To kind of break it down to make your travel across it easier, uh, Athkatla is divided, or I have divided it mainly into districts. You are currently in the city gates. Um, the city gates uh, stand at the foot of the city, uh, and you can see that there are bazaar, there are bazaars and, and merchants and traders here. But it is mainly to do with the thorough track of the city. You see residential homes, that sort of thing. There, other the other places that you can visit within the city are the Bridge of Six Songs, which is the very uh, Ponte, uh, Ponte Vecchio kind of style bridge with all the buildings and stuff attached to the side. The River District. Uh, which kind of occupies the bulk of the what they call the, the lower city, the southern half of the city. Uh, Joaquin's Promenade, which is a giant open air marketplace and bazaar. Uh, the docks. Uh, there is a temple district and a government district. Hmm. And I can repeat all of this whenever you guys want as well. There was also once a graveyard district, uh, but that seems to have been sort of uh, turned into a more pastoral gardens and the graveyards have been moved outside of the city's walls after an incident with a lot of undead uh, almost a century ago. They sort of transferred the city to be outside of the city's walls in case of any other uh, issues. Um, but yeah, those are the kind of districts of the city. Uh, you guys have already made some history checks, so you know a little bit about the city, and that's probably as much as you're gonna know. Like, we can't, you're not gonna be able to make another check to be like, oh, do I know any more? Do I know any more? You guys kind of have the information that you have. Yep. Um, and really, this is the point now where it's kind of over to you and how you wanna investigate this matter, really. Uh, this is, you have an idea that there is some sort of nefarious spell, and the source of it is somewhere within the city, and you need to try and shut it down. How you get there, how you find it, that is entirely now down to you guys doing that. Mr. Moneybags over here is bearing dinner for everybody. Oh, well. I was going to suggest we go to a tavern. I was going to suggest... It'd be nice just... to have a roof over our heads gonna... for once, maybe. I've got that to you. We could do that, and then we could also do something else afterwards. I mean, yes, we're going to the brothel, Astaria. I wasn't going to say the this. brothel. Why does everybody automatically assume it's all about sex? We need to Looks go to the marketplace. Mm. I'm actually with Lazel. I know, I know, disgusting. But what were you going? To well, say? I've actually, in all seriousness, I do have maybe, possibly, some connections to, let's say, the more underworld kind of people. And I believe docks or tavern might be a good starting place to uh, spread some coin and ask some uh, information. Lead the way. Also, brothels work. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, I'm also going to make the point that this is a point where I'm going to say that the protection of the relic is enough that you can split up because we want you guys to kind of. Is that the number one cause of party death? Yes. <laughs> well, it is a good way of getting lots of information quickly. So yeah. if you did want to go to different parts, like say Lazel and Shahat want to go to believe that the marketplace is the best place to go, they could have the spiciest, funniest, uh, you know, shopping trip ever. Um, <laughs> they could absolutely do that. Uh, whilst uh, everyone else goes to the docks, or if people want to split off and, and do things like that as well. The way that that the city works is you will have to pass through at least the river district to get to the rest of the city. Yep. From the city gates, the river district is almost the entire lower section of the city. So you'll move through that and then you can kind of go to other places that you want to go to. Um, the temple and government district are across the bridge. So you would have to pass across the bridge to get to those areas as well. Question, right. we don't have any way to keep in touch with each other when we do split. Unless we make a, a point. Tapples. Tapples. Mm -hmm. I don't would know that, how far they work. Yeah, it doesn't work that far. I would say I would say the temple. You've never, you've never been able to experience how far it would work. Okay. It will certainly give you a, a, a distance. You can still telepathically communicate, okay. but you've never tested it to like a great distance before. Okay. Mm -hmm. so Why don't we just agree to meet up at a point? point. Yeah. That, that, is, that is absolutely. I can't go wrong at all. Yeah. I'm 
may need some muscle around going. I figured we'd, we'd be a good We pair. might be a good yeah. idea to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Much as it pains me to say it, Shadowheart, I suppose we should head to the marketplace. We'll have a lovely time together, baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Gail? Did he have a montage of them, like, Why picking not, up, like, doing, like, like, <laughs> doing coconut <laughs> shells <laughs> and winning off? <laughs> and having, like, candy <laughs> floss? No, and no, having no, the best time. All right, so it sounds like we've got Lazel and Shadowheart want to go to and Joaquin's Promenade, the big open air market, mm-hmm. right? You guys want to head there, okay? And then we've got uh, uh, Asterian and Kylak going to the docks, yep. did you say? Yep. All right. And then where There's do There's taverns you... there. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, there were hundreds <laughs> of taverns. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> where will uh, Gail and Woe, would Gail and Will like to go? Is there any kind of like area or thing that you might think to fit? And you can ask me questions, by the way, as because <laughs> yeah. obviously I appreciate yeah, you so. know nothing about this city and this world, so you can always be like, Mark, would we, you know, would we know anything about this, or can I make a check somehow to like figure out where we could can go. We check, can I check my map? And yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like you want to read through Volo's guide to to <laughs> <Anne> Catler, um, <laughs> Absolutely, you can do that. Um, it's a page. I want to. I, I want to <laughs> turn it really quick. Yeah, so where this <laughs> energy, this magic is coming from. Do a detect magic. Okay. To sense where. Ah, oh, okay. There's a particularly large amount. Okay. Of Great. negative energy Sifidol. coming yes. from a certain right. place. Okay. Maybe that would be it's a. Good place. Right. So just, I, I just want to. I want to. Mm. In my head, the way that I see this working, and tell me if you guys disagree, because obviously it's your choice. Uh, this point like you've all split off right you guys have made a decision so will and and gail have stood there kind of like you know will's flicking through his book you find like a bench you're kind of like kind of flicking through to find information and that's when gail's going to cast his spell you two have gone off towards the docks and everything else we didn't arrange a time to meet up no we didn't <laughs> that's, that's very true Come back. if you want to do that <laughs> all of us will, 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 if you want to do that we can establish that now yes. Yes. How, how many so how hours, hours do you think a couple of hours yeah two, I mean, hours two hours two hours yeah it takes a while to get everywhere as well mm. yeah and probably the easiest easiest place to meet up is in the river district um there is a famous inn called the copper coronet and that's like oh, the yeah. famous inn in the city it's, it's like great. an easy landmark for you guys so to best three, hours? Four. Four hours? Four. Four. four hours four hours yeah. four hours four in the hours. enough time for you to have the montage with the, yeah. Yeah. With the coconut shine that does happen yeah that yeah. to be a complete okay. ball what time is it now um it would be so you that fight by the way mm. it took like 13 seconds <laughs> the, the, the <laughs> yeah. fight was like really quick yeah. so it was really early in the morning when this will happen with elminster arrival the chats the investigation yeah. searching for the gear it's really not any later than like 9 a.m it's like the oh, beginning wow. of the day Colac's oh, really oh, gutted the taverns aren't oh, open yeah. yet well they really, might be she has been <laughs> looking forward to Frosty Pine this is a pretty very long time pretty That's rough right. and rough and tumble pretty city pretty they love money <laughs> this might be the, I mean almost think of this almost like a bit of a fancy New York it is kind of like a city that doesn't cool. sleep like they want to make taverns like they'll they're, they'll 100% still be open actually that's a very good point Gail old buddy old pal old chum as I put my arm around no, oh, hang on. <laughs> now listen here, darling. I sense where this is going. Yes. So here's the thing. The people that I'm going to see are very oh. interesting people. However, they do sometimes need persuasion. It's money, isn't it? You it might money. be cash. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. Cash. Yeah, you thought could you would... spare... I mean, give it to her if you don't, you know, trust me. <laughs> Melty McMetal hands over there. Fair enough. Give me the <laughs> no, I mean, maybe. Hold just, on. just a little bit, just so I can grease some palms. And That's a good like point. That. I think we might have to canonize that you have some sort of heat safe pouch for your money. My clothes haven't burnt off that's yet. True. Have yeah, they? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. The pocket's still just about survived. Yeah. As long as I'm calm, it's all right. Um, nice. Would that be okay? Just to get a little you guys, yeah, payday loan thing. It's up to Gail and Tim. How much would you like to give him? I don't have a job, so it's. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. 20? No. <laughs> what? I'll we'll call it 10 and I want change. How about I see you at 15, done? 15, 15, fine. done. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> Mark got 15, so you can sure got by 15. Right, so and, and Gail can. Uh, uh, and are you going to hand out any of the goods that you recovered, Asterian? What goods? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure wow. you had the opportunity. Oh, yeah. um, that's absolutely mm-hmm. fine. Actually, I am going to do one thing. Okay. Um, I'm, as you do that, I say, thank you. Now, listen, here's the thing. Don't tell the others. My man okay. I'm going to pass him the counter spell scroll. Okay. Because I think of, I, it could be useful for me, but to be honest with you, yeah. yeah. Sure. Magic. Yeah. Yawn. So I just think it's probably better for him to take Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. He's, he's going to be able to use it better right. than I would. Okay. So I'm going to well, give him the counter so, spell. Okay, I'm going to give you this. Yeah. This is the spell card counter spell, but it is on a scroll. When you use yeah. a scroll, once you've cast it, it's gone. So it's cool. permanently gone. But it works exactly the same as casting a spell. You don't right. use your spell slots, you just burn the spell. But I'm still going to keep the detect th- thoughts. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Can you as a wizard learn the <coughs> spell? He or could inscribe it into his spell book. Yeah, absolutely. Gail can't cast third level spells yet, but he could inscribe oh, okay. it into his spell book as 
well. So, but uh, for a one shot, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. use the scroll. <laughs> um, <laughs> Voice of uh, God. Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've played with too many D and D players who hoard scrolls and potions yeah, and never yeah. use them, and yeah. I'm like, I put them there for you to use. Use them. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, so you guys arrange the time to meet up. You kind of split off. The city is bustling. It is morning. Everyone is rushing around, ready to get to market to trade. Um, and as you make your way to your various destinations, there was one thing which was really interesting, and I just want to ask how it's going to go down. Gail, how are you casting Detect Magic? How am I doing Yeah, this? like, where are you going to, like, are you, Will sat there on the bench, are you just going to kind of, you know, cast oh, the spell? Okay. I might uh, wander off into an alley. Ah, <laughs> good. I'm, I'm glad I asked. <laughs> wander um, off into an alley. Yeah, just wander <laughs> off into an alley. Less suspicious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. The one that so, smells least of where piss. Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> the one I'll go to. So I'd like you to do uh, uh, two things for me. Yep. Uh, one is going to be a stealth check. Yep. Uh, so this is to see how well you slip on. It's been lovely knowing you, darling. Lovely yep. knowing I'll be fine, don't worry. What could possibly, possibly go wrong? Yeah, this is the way to play, baby. This is the way to play. So yeah, this uh, is d20, yep. and then your stealth is a skill. So it's a skill uh, called stealth. Uh, where's the stealth? Uh, ah, yes, plus two. Plus two. Ten. All right, so a total of 12. 12. I'm going to make a note of that. Oh, this is very serious. <laughs> That's quite hard enough. Um, and then, yeah, you cast the detect magic spell. Um, now, detect magic. If you do, you want to read it out for us for, uh, for the folks at home as well. Yeah, for the duration, you sense the presence of magic within thirty feet of you. If you sense magic in this way, you can use your action to see a faint aura around any visible creature or object in the area that bears magic, okay. and you learn its school of magic, if any. Okay. And how um, long does it last? Does it say it should have a duration uh, somewhere at the top? Duration 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Okay, cool. So we'll say that that's active. Um, you feel... What does this look like actually for Gail? Like, does this change your eyes or is this just like an internal sense? What do you think that this might look like as a spell being cast? As a spell being cast, I would see it as like a wave. So it's almost invisible, but it kind of just warps out you almost like sound waves almost, almost like, like a sound wave exactly i like that visual that's very cool yeah. um all right so you kind of return from your you kind of sneak into the alley you cast your spell uh, immediately around you within 30 feet there's the tracest amounts of magic but you know as a wizard that that's kind of the weave that's present in mm. most things and that you don't detect anything immediately mm -hmm. but that spells concentration for 10 minutes you can keep that up while you explore around um, and it's also a ritual spell now this is a thing that um, we, you can do as a wizard a ritual spell if you take 10 minutes to cast it doesn't cost a spell slot so you yeah. can actually cast that and keep casting it mm. as long as you spend longer to actually do the magic to cast it. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So um, and then so you can keep casting it if you like. It means you save your spell slots uh, for other things. Cool. Um, so don't mark off a spell slot unless you would like to do it quickly. No, I think I'll take the take, time. Take the time. Um, all right. In that time, uh, Will, you've been flicking through your book trying mm -hmm. to kind of find out anything, and you do actually find some useful information in here <laughs> uh, from Votham. You learn that within Athkatla, there are three major power factions. Um, and Volo uh, kind of talks about them having worked with them and sort of spent time with the, all three of them. Um, and it's kind of controversial because the first one is called the Merchant Houses, and these are the like the nobility. But they're not like born nobles. This is whoever has the most money can buy a seat on the council, um, and they become the, the, the heads of, they become these nobles' houses, basically. Um, it's called the Council of Six, and you basically buy a seat on it. Uh, the other powerful, uh, another power faction is the Cowled Wizards, which uh, Gale knew about. And these are basically magicians who control the use of arcane magic. So this would also affect you, because you use arcane magic as a warlock. Mm -hmm. Divine magic, like Shadowheart uses, is actually totally okay in the city, and it's ruled by the, the, the temples. That's but magic. arcane magic is basically illegal unless you have a license. Um, and the cow Cowled Wizards are powerful. They're very powerful, they're very influential. They control at least one of the merchant houses. Houses um, and all that. The last, sorry, go on. so they wouldn't like me using it in this city. The, if they or catch you doing it, no. If they catch me, you, okay. you're, that will probably be grounds for being arrested. Okay. Um, 
It's weird you're reading this as Gail slides off into an alley. But you just <laughs> 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 Love the idea that you're reading it out loud and they'll do the day the day to you sort of come back and come back. Where's he gone? Where's he gone? The last one is probably the most interesting because it's like, oh wow, I you know Volo is surprising that Volo wrote about it. Apparently there is a faction in the city called the Shadow Thieves. And this is a uh, criminal organization, like a powerful syndicate. We're talking like mafia kind of gangsters. And they control one of the merchant houses and they're basically at war. The, all three of these factions are bickering and trying to control each other. Um, and all three of them have spies and contacts all over the city. You are almost certain that one of them that, that all three of them could probably help you find the source of this, whatever is going on. They've probably been investigating it and all that kind of stuff as well, mm -hmm. all right? Um, and you kind of discover that as you're reading through the book. So mm -hmm. that's that's the information you gave it to you. Those of you who leave uh, the city gates, so at this point, that's going to be uh, Asarian, Karlak, Shahart, and Lazel. Uh, you guys pass through the river district. Um, as you're traveling through, you witness a large gathering, like a huge amount of civilians have gathered around a kind of stone stage, like a kind of raised up stone platform, where it looks like there's an official almost message board, and there's trumpeters dressed in like red and white, and they've got these kind of blaring uh, trumpets, and you see uh, three wizards in hoods with masks stood on top of it, and they seem to be kind of giving out like a general statement, but the crowd is in an uproar, and you, you begin to hear like the little little snippets of what's being said. You hear stuff like, what are you doing about all the kidnappings? And then you hear like another, just like, those gangsters are running rampant in the city. The guards are useless. When are you gonna put a stop to them? My daughter went missing five days ago, vanished right from her room. You magic bastards are supposed to protect us. You're kind of hearing like these voices of dissent and things like that. And you see this main mage who seems to be the sort of leader, the more superior one, steps forward wearing uh, vermilion robes, an ornate gold mask, kind of just throws his hands up in this wave of force. Like not enough to do damage, but enough to make everyone sort of go quiet and still. Um, and you almost swear that the voice must be magically enhanced because from behind a mask there's no muffling and you can hear it even from far away and you hear citizens many of the order of the cowled wizards are indisposed with important business for the merchant houses we are doing everything we can and are working with the golden guard to investigate these missing persons and the recent abductions everything is in order you are safe go back to your homes you will not be warned again and you see that there's some grumblings and then the other mages slam their staffs and they begin to see like, you know, magic begins to swirl around them and the common folk and, and laborers and the merchants all kind of grumble and begin to make their way out. You see a couple of them linger and kind of talk to each other, but they all basically disperse. Eventually the wizards look at each other and then they vanish. They sort of almost just teleport away um, and a few guards are kind of left to like walk around basically. I mean, it's just something you see as you pass. Yeah. We're all four, because we we all you have were, to, yeah, all yeah, have to yeah, pass this. So you probably like see it from different angles, right? Yeah, like yeah. Karlak and, and uh, Sarah, you're on one side yeah, towards yeah. the docks, but it's the two of you are heading south, so you're maybe on a slight, you will see it from these different angles, but it's such a big crowd, and that voice was so loud, like magically amplified, all you all it. heard it, basically. Mm -hmm. um, Gwil and Gail, you probably won't, because they've gone by the time you you reach there, so you guys probably mm -hmm. wouldn't hear about that, but you would see posters. Um, you begin to spot like posters like missing, uh, you know, my, my, my tiefling daughter is missing, blah 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 seen last uh, seen three days ago on the on the soul blah 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 you see like posters for almost like uh, gossip posters of like um of magazine of uh, newspapers basically mm. passed it up uh, rumors cowled wizards uh, uh, afflicted with magical disease true question mark kind of thing like is our city safe merchant princes say everything is fine you know that kind of stuff you yeah. know that kind of scattered around the place you can definitely see that there is an edge to this city um for the most part people are going about their business and trading but there's this underlying level of oppression. paranoia oppression there's definitely um you can immediately tell that there is a, a big wealth divide here like the rich who are in charge are extravagantly rich and then you have like the middle classes who are kind of like you know average and then you have a lower class which are the laborers and things like that speaking of the extravagantly mm. rich and as this thing happens with a large crowd mm. uh it, could i accidentally sort of nudge Karlak into an extravagantly rich person let's say and then <laughs> use that bump 
to then maybe find something in my hands that wasn't there before. <laughs> well, what I'd say with this is there probably isn't anybody extravagantly wealthy in this crowd, but you can definitely target some rich-looking merchants, like kind of upper-middle class. I'll kind of prepare level. to slum my values mm. down. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, so I would say that, like, if you want to nudge Karlak, uh, I don't know, do you, like, kind of, like, you know, how would like, Karlak react Karlak to that? i a second to work out what's going on. Yeah. But it's not um, even, I don't need her to come with me, I just no, need no, her no. to just, uh, bump into be someone. an object to Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, careful, you're going to burn yourself. <laughs> That's also a possibility. Yeah, that's probably yeah. true. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I might say, like, yeah, if you bump into Karlak, you take a point of fire damage. Like, yes! Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I will, I, yeah. yeah, but worth it. Uh, but yeah, you bump into like you kind of cause like a bit of commotion because also people like when you bump it, they're like, oh my god, like like that, kind of thing. That's kind of the point. Of yeah, yeah. And there's I want to bump, bump it into the person that will also yeah. get potentially fire damage. So then I go, I'm gonna roll d20. Yeah. If I get under a nine, they might set on fire. All right. Fifteen. They're fine. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so they kind of bump into you like, oh, and he's kind of like, he's like, what's where you're going, Tiefling? And he kind of like looks at you, kind of a bit shocked and astounded, like very scared as well, because you are very clearly towering above <coughs> him. Um, but he kind of looks around, very wealthy-looking merchant, and I'm guessing you would like to sneak into the pocket. So give me a sleight of hand check, Astarian. Do I you... get any kind of bonus? I'd say you have advantage. Yeah, Thank I'd you. say that with this big crowd, like it's only because the big crowd was assembled here, really. Cool. Uh, bumping got... into Karlak on normally on a normal street wouldn't help you, but in this environment, definitely, definitely helps. I got sleight of hand 7. Okay, so uh, roll twice, take the uh, higher. That's 20, um, 7, 7, 24. Okay. And that is, yeah, it's lower, so 24. And like, the biggest shit eating grin on my face. Isn't sure. It? And you, do you say anything to them, sort of, or is this like a kind is of, like, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry, that awful uncouth tiefling, I saw everything that happened. Let me see if you're okay, let me pat you down, make sure there's sure. nothing smoldering on you. Nasty, it's nasty, nasty like, tiefling. And, you, and obviously, like, Asterian dresses. what is happening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But Asterian, you're, <laughs> you're a courtier as your background, you're dressed yeah. very well. Yeah, yeah, I'm dressed and, well. And you see th myself. this man immediately responds to that. Like, Carl, you're wearing these burnt, like, leathers, you look kind of in the like you kind of look closer to the labels <coughs> and things like that Asterian looks more like this guy's kind of class oh, yes, right, and he's just like oh thank you my dear oh thank you so much yes oh she didn't did she burn my and she's like turning around yeah. like is my cloak okay let me have a look darling let me yeah. have a look and, and underneath you, you and grab like a silk purse basically cool. like and totally yeah. no you look absolutely dashing darling sure, absolutely yeah. fine and he's no, just like oh thank you he's like oh I, I do I know many of the people who, who are you wearing and he sort of like engages you in a bit of conversation <laughs> <laughs> oh well uh Today, currently, and I'm so, I start like rifting on some bullshit name about. Yeah, it. like, do you say somebody from Baldur's Gate, or just making a name? No, up? no, I say specifically. Uh, are you familiar with Baldur's Gate? Oh, of course, my dear. We, we import many things from all across the. This world. is from Neverwinter. So oh, yes, 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 and, he kind of, yeah. and there's an element of like, uh, oh, I've not heard them. They're very good in yeah. something. He says, well, if you ever fancy it, uh, something. Um, the t the Temple of Sunni is having something of a bit of a, a fashion show oh. this weekend. We're celebrating uh, the tailors and things in the city. Hey, you should stop by. I think you would appreciate Charming. it. Charming. Anybody you could recommend specifically? Oh, they'll all be on display. You'll, you'll see all of their works in. And in your place. name is? My name is Brennan. Brennan Quint. Charles <laughs> 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 Quint. <laughs> and yours, my boy? Uh, I'm a Starian. A Starian. What a delightful name. Um, <laughs> yes. Make a persuasion check for me. Yes, yeah, 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 I know. Uh, 11, Carl, like, at this point, like, whatever. 11, yeah, we're actually going to go and find out what this is. We're going to our clothes away. With my, with my bonus, 13. 13? Uh, this, do this, I have, no charisma bonus. Actually. Yeah, it, it will say in your persuasion. Yeah. He sort of has that sort of, like, there's a mild interest, but he's not so, super taken. It would take a bit, it's like a slow burn. Like, he would probably... It's a slow he's, burn. He's no, definitely no, a sort no. of like, oh, well, perhaps I will see you. I planted like, the seed. Though. Yeah, planted you planted the seed. The seed. All right. um, when you check that purse, by the way, there is, uh, there is about 20 gold. In it. All right. Nice. Um, but so, with that, go on. Since we're scrumping, yeah. Uh, do you want to give me half of that? Maybe. I don't know what you're talking about. Though. It's for the greater good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I feel like you've called yeah, me. It was terrible. Me. Well, now that you thing. mention it, <laughs> all right. I, well, the, uh, what I'm trying to explain to what I'm explain to you is mm. that I'm going to use this as bribe money. 
Uh, oh, I'm sure you will. Oh, God. Fine, here you go. Don't spend all at once. You <laughs> ten. Nice. All right, so we're that reminds me of the old days on right. the <laughs> Nice. And then lastly, I just want to do something, uh, because we're going to have to wrap up our first episode here in a minute, but I want to do something with Lazy on the show. Yeah. So you guys Fight. make your way, after hearing this kind of big, uh, you know, yes. you, see this big, you see this big announcement, the cow wizard and all this kind of stuff, and then you make your way, and Joaquin's promenade, immediately you notice it, because it is almost like the Colosseum. Um, these big, huge walls, tiered kind of levels, Levels, but it is an entirely enormous open market and then there are physical shops built into the stands It looks like this was an old fighting arena Like I think like Lazella, 100% you would be like oh this looks like a fighting arena that you would have trained in That you would have seen many great glorious battles the get probably reenacting famous historical battles and things like that for entertainment and sport But this has been turned into a traders like market basically um, And you can see that there are dozens of traders and and merchants with stands and stalls But there's one in particular at the far end and as you're making your your way down and it stands out because everywhere else is like very traditional fantasy stores right forge hammers arms and things like that and there's a dwarf and you know the moon weavers rest and it's this beautiful elven inn and you kind of got all these things and then there's this place right at the end of the promenade and it's big it's clearly like very um, successful and it's got this bright kind of blue logo of an a and an m and it's called the Adventurer's Mart. And you can almost see that there are these <laughs> glass windows and there's like this little imp and as he sees people approach, he slides the doors and goes, bing bong, and he slides them open. Uh, and you see that there are, there, to the end. there are like rows, like stalls, and it's like discount potions of healing you know 20 gold and there's like rows of them and things like that and then there's like uh magical or uh, like it will say something like true steel swords totally magical and then there's like a rack of them on like a weapons rack at the back um and you see that him and he's got like a little hat on like a little fastener and he's got like a little bow tie and he just opens the door he does bing bong and then he shuts the door <laughs> and then he's like got a little stool and he just sits there and that's his job. And, and yeah, that's his job. Yeah, and, that, and that, it, this place stands out amongst all of them. Like, as it's totally out of place. Like, Amazing. it's so out of place. Uh, Amazing. Should we talk to the imp? I think we should talk to the imp. Ask him what's yeah, what. Yeah, I feel like the imp has seen a lot. And, and did you say it's like at the back? So uh, it's at the very back of the prom of the Colosseum, basically. So, so imagine this wide. Everything. Yeah. So like, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, he like would absolutely. And like, he's like right on the door. Their glass doors. He looks out onto this huge like open plot as a marketplace. Right. And another thing, Shadowheart, I must say, after seeing those wizards at the bridge, if there's any powerful magic, and I don't think Gale will be able to tell you this because he's having a, one of those days, <laughs> but it <laughs> seems like if there's See anything <laughs> happening, it <laughs> would be happening from those three magical wizards. Yes. Don't you agree? I absolutely agree. But let's For talk once. to the inn. Yeah. For once, yes. Um, I've got passive wisdom perception what does that mean can i use so that? that basically is like rather than me you having to constantly be like mark can i make a perception check to see if i spot a trap mark can i make a perception check to see if somebody's following us uh passive is basically like I, I you can just tell me your passive score and then if anybody would say like was trying to sneak up on you and they rolled lower than that i would just say you can you feel like somebody approaching you or you see them it's like a way of rather than constantly rolling dice basically right. um checking because i'm yeah. like oh, i want to i want to make sure that there's no one else in the shop yeah i mean like yeah like, so like mm, you can make an you, you can say like i'd like to actively search and that would be you making a perception check yeah i'd like to i'd like to scout out the place sure first. sure sure sure, sure. so ahead. yeah let's make a perception check so this so, is d20 yeah and then your skill perception and you're going to add your bonus so, so skills are on the far side on the far left side yeah on the left side. Perception. What am I looking at? Perception. Perception. Where's that? Is that five. five okay, like plus five. Really good. You've got really good perception. Yeah. Fingers crossed you roll. Ten. Ten total? So 15. Oh, 15. 15. So you look around um, and you're looking around this place and there are like... <laughs> There are like wannabe adventurers in here. Like you see like kids that are like 16 and 17 and like maybe one of them's got like a leather jacket on and is like leather armor. You know, it's like like looking at all the bees and he's like, maybe they're examining the swords. Like, yeah, yeah it's a good one, like blah, blah, blah. Like kind of like, you know, teenagers <laughs> who are getting excited. Um, and they're sort of in there. 
there's a shopkeeper at the back. You can see he's this old gnome, and he's got these eyebrows that grow out so long they curl around like spirals. And he's he's got a bright blue beard, like a pointed, almost like a spike of hair. Um, but he's got like glasses, and he's reading what is very clearly an absolutely filthy pornographic book. He's <laughs> like reading it openly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he'll be of much help. But. Um, but they're the only ones in the store, apart from this imp who sat on a stall and hasn't like really like said or like looked in your direction. Just like is waiting for people to approach the door and then does his job. Um, but nobody else. The only other thing you see in this place is you see a poster up on the wall, um, and it basically the poster says presenting the adventurer Mark. Ball Spawn Experience, <laughs> a guided and narrative uh, <laughs> tour of uh, Athcatla's history. And it's basically like a poster, like, and it has like this big ominous door, and it has like this silhouetted figure, like, heroically standing against it, like, choose your own adventure, Amazing. understand the story, be a part of history, <laughs> is like the slogan. Um, that's the only other thing you kind of notice in that. It's, yeah, very weird, this place. <laughs> I think we need to talk to the Talk to the end. Sure. Yeah. sure. I will do the talking. I think that's a wise choice. Sure. <laughs> Glad we agree on something. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, once. you want to approach the imp. Mm -hmm. uh, the imp looks very confused uh, <laughs> and sort of like glances over to you and then looks back towards the door and then notices that you haven't left yet and like looks up and like looks terrified <laughs> like, what's happening? So, so we ask him about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what'd you say? I said, okay. Speak. <laughs> Bing bong! Later, later. He slides the door quickly. Bing bong! Sorry, friend. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for my... Uh, if my companion scared you. Um, we're investigating some very dark magic. That, uh, oh. You that see, like, it, the little imp, his ears actually, like, tighten up when you say dark magic. He's like, oh. uh, that, that has uh, That's hurt our dear friend. And I was wondering, darling imp, if, if ah, eyes go wide when you say darling imp darling like, sweet ah. imp whether you ah. might have heard something that could help our friend bing bong <laughs> oh shadow heart it's useless he is clearly dense perhaps a sword might help loosen his tongue Lazel, <laughs> calm down do you, do you like draw the blade slightly yeah he he like looks there and he begins like and he's speaking in some language. Do either of you speak infernal? No. <laughs> no. 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 He is oh, just like, right. and he's like, gets on his knees and he's groveling. <laughs> he's like putting his hands over his head. Do you speak the common tongue, imp? Bing bong! Oh. Lord. Right, I'm going to try a different tack. Can you just investigate something in the back of the shop? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I crouch down to comfort the, oh, no. the poor oh, him. Oh, oh, like, he like brings shit. his hands up like he wants a little hug. Okay, I, <laughs> I have a big heart. sigh and then, oh, for God's sake, give him a little pat. Okay. okay. <laughs> his little wings kind of curl How around. How big is this imp? He's like, Mid yeah, like about okay. this big. Okay. He's, you know. Okay. Very small. I, I quite like him. I like animals. I don't know whether this counts as an animal. He's not an animal. Okay. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a living sentient being. Yeah. Okay, but still, he's quite cute. Um, now, calmly, can you help us? No! <laughs> oh, man! Only... Bing bong. <laughs> and he's like speaking in this strange devil tongue to you. Do you know anyone else who can help us? He points to the back of the room, oh, the and you see Lazel. No, <laughs> like, he like looks up. He's like really <coughs> looking, he looks up like you're a customer. Hello there. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Adventures Mars. Can I help you? Yes. Yes, you can, but only if you put I down will... that filthy book first. Oh, my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> I put it with my collection. Hello. Oh, good to know. My name is Akim. How can I help you here today? 
I will be brief. A Kim, is it? Yes. Can you see me behind those spectacles? Actually, I do not care. I will be straight with you. Do not speak. We are under a bit of time pressure, okay? We are looking for some dark magic. It's affected one of our friends. Oh. I'd rather we didn't rescue him, but it appears that we need to to get this tadpole out of our heads. Understood? Do you know anything about it? Dark magic? Aisle five. And he points down to the adventurer's mark. No, no, no. Oh. Akim, do you know anything about dark magic in this place? Somebody that might be controlling it. Oh, you're looking, looking for someone to cast dark magic. No, oh. Akim. <laughs> and if you do not understand at third time, I might have to get out my weapon and make you understand it. Wouldn't do that. Uh, give me an intimidation check with advantage. This is a skill called intimidation. Um, so happy, Dev. Yeah, Dev. I know. <laughs> what do I do? So this is a d20, so the big dice, and then look for your skill called intimidation. So uh, it's just a plus one. But you're going to have advantage. So you roll twice, and you take the highest result on the dice because you are very intimidating. It's a five. Not okay, great. not great. Let's see what the other one is. It's is that six or a nine? That's a nine. 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 So plus one. Ten. So ten. <laughs> it's enough that he's just like, let, I would love it. Let me understand. You are, what exactly do you want? I will happily tell you, please don't kill me. But I don't understand. You are, you are looking for uh, a specific s s magic? The source of the dark magic is coming from this place, not from this oh, shop. I see, I from see. this city, if I must be specific with you're, you. You're sure it's not coming from this shop? I'm very limited in my knowledge. I mainly know about things here, but, 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 I mean, magic in the city, I mean, that would be the work of the cowled wizards, and I, I've, I'm, I, I have my license, and I don't want to risk getting it revoked, my dears, but, um, the cowled wizards would know about it. Uh, I, I, I'm not a, I'm not a mage. Uh, I am a very minor mage. I'm not a prolific mage. I, I am very small. I where, create magical items. Where, where, where can we find these wizards? Uh, the, where are they based? Uh, if you wish to go speak with them, the government district across the bridge. But they are they are very powerful and busy. And I've heard that they are not receiving visitors. They are they've refused visitors of late. Um, uh, I mean, if you want to learn more about dark magic here in Athcatla, you could always try the Adventurer's Mart Balsborn Experience, a narrative <laughs> journey and, and adventure uh, in the history of our city. That we, you, It was about a very famous evil mage uh, called Irenicus, John Irenicus. He was quite the villain. I mean, him and, the, and they had a fight. There's ruins, and we've built a whole thing in the ruins of his old laboratory. It's like a like a little adventure, and you learn about the history yeah. of, of what happened. And... Oh, I'm not much for tourist <laughs> activities, but... But I suppose this sounds like it might be useful. How long does it last? Oh, well, it's it's a guided tour. Yes. It takes about 60 minutes. Uh, um, can we it, make it 30? <laughs> oh, well, well, you could if you, if I guess if you didn't read all the plaques and you didn't listen to all of the clockwork yeah, puppets. No, I, and, I won't and be reading the plaques. Well, well, then I guess if you, you could do it in 30 minutes. Yeah, there's a fun slide at the end. No, that <laughs> no fun slides. Oh, okay. Just well, the brief, oh, well, abridged version. Oh, okay, well, Two tickets for the Barlspawn experience. That's uh, ten gold, five gold each. Shadow well, heart, come on. <laughs> we'll, do it. we'll do it for five altogether. Oh, oh well, we don't really do a, a family discount, but. Uh, <laughs> And he looks at Laser, I'll make an exception. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah, you guys buy two tickets to the Athcatla yes. Adventurers Mart uh, uh, Ballspawn experience. A narrative a journey time. through the history of the Ballspawn no, era. Good um, and that is actually, we're going to have to call our first episode to a close on that bombshell. <laughs> I also want to point out Bing Bong, the imp, his name is Bing Bong, by the way, uh, is not, he's still holding up to that hug. You didn't stop hugging him. So he's just like clutched on. So, he's mine now. He's, he's, well, he's at least like you know following you around for now. Um, but that is going to be it for our first thing. Just before we wrap up, this has obviously been for some of you your first D and D experience. And I just want to have a quick like, how have you found it? Like, how have you enjoyed it? We kind of had a little bit of everything, a bit of combat, a bit of role playing, a bit of sort of world building. And how did you guys find it? Like, I'd love to know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm In like, oh way. god, no! What have I done? I ruined it. Um, no, good. Yeah, yeah. You guys have had fun. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm absolutely. very, very pleased yeah. to hear that. And uh, and I've yeah. got loot. Uh, you've got loot. Wonderful. And 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 yeah, things will happen. And we've got imps and and terrible consequences that are soon to uh, catch up on people. Yay. Um, Yay. But yeah, if you would like to see the conclusion to this adventure, please come back for episode two. Uh, you can follow us here on High Rollers uh, to catch the stream when it goes live, but also catch up on YouTube or follow us and watch it and listen to our podcast as well. And you can also find all these wonderful people uh, on their social media. Um, and you can go follow them and learn about all their things if they are on there. Um, and we will throw links and stuff in the description below. Um, and yeah, follow them on their various channels. And I know that some, we have some stream people doing streams of the game and things like that as well. Um, and then once again, a big thank you to Larian Studios for helping make this happen because Woo! that was a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, we will see you for episode two of our uh, Baldur's Gate 3 cast play D&D. &D. Bye! Hey! <laughs> hey.